Cash, please. Look in my eyes, what do you see? The cult of personality. I know your anger, I know your dreams. Hello, welcome to a Monday edition of The Voice of Ocala. I'm Buddy Martin with you once again on a Monday at 3 o'clock. We're here every weekday from 3 to 6. Sports starts at 5. we got some special guests coming for you today. Uh, and also, uh, had quite a nice weekend. Hope you did out there. Relaxing, working, watching sports, going to the movies, etc., etc., It's kind of one of those quiet, laid-back weekends. Chilly, too cold to really go out there and do anything. A chilly 25 this morning, uh, actually last night at 10 o'clock. We're up to 63 or 4 now, and um, I think we're in for some more cold weather than rain. But uh, you can feel it for sure. You have that extra little layer when you go to bed at night. I don't like to turn my air, I mean, my heat up real high at nighttime because it dries you out. I mean, a, a nice little 70 is fine, or 69, but when it gets down to 25, you do begin to feel it through the covers, and uh, it was it was good sleeping, but it was a little bit, a little little chilly when you get up to, to go get a drink of water or the bathroom, you feel it on your feet, especially at my house on terrazzo floors, too. <laughs> you really begin to feel it. So, on the program today, uh, we're very uh, honored to have Steve Spurrier with us today at 530. Head ball coach joining us to talk about some of the recent news out of South Carolina. A good year that the Gamecocks have. His future as a coach, et cetera, et cetera. So looking forward to having Steve on with us. Um, also, uh, we uh, we want to vi- revisit Downton Abbey last night. JJ, I know you've seen the whole season, but uh, a bit of a downer for Downton Abbey. You warned me about this, and I should have been – paying attention, but uh, the season ended last night, and it ended on a, on a really somber, sad note, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Today is President's Day. Uh, if you got a favorite, or a least favorite, president, you can call us on the program when we don't have guests, which we will today, a few. Uh, and weigh in. Who was your favorite president? wonder how... Um, wonder how the last couple will stack up, Bush and Obama. Uh, I think most people, when they start talking about favorite presidents, they go back a few years. Uh, I like to dip back into the earlier day when Reagan was in office, or even to some degree Bill Clinton, that was extremely popular, probably as popular as he ever was. But there's a lot of give hell Harry guys out there too. So, you know, there's something significant going on in our community, and we always like to talk about people who do things, and uh, there's the, the Marion County uh, folks are working once again, historical people, on a project uh, that's extremely viable as a historical site. That's Fort King. Fort King, a fort which, of course, was once an outpost for the U.S. Army and the, and the Seminole Indian Wars and uh, has great history behind it. And Maury Dean, who's the, you know him from the days of the honor flights he worked on so hard to get to Washington, also a former sheriff. He'll join us in the studio today. He's heading up that group, and he'll tell us about what's happening in terms of um, that that project, and we want to stay behind that because that's certainly a very worthy one for sure. It's time for Dr. Buddy again today. He comes out every Monday. Today's topic will be something like, this is actually something from a magazine that I found, about things men wish women knew. Now, most guys don't like their women to know anything. But this is one that things, five things men wish women knew from Shape Magazine. We'll tell you what that's all about. Um, and, of course, our usual tweets and quotes. The big story today in sports, I just watched Magic and listened to Magic Johnson for a good 45 minutes talking about it. Jerry Buss, owner of the Lakers, died at 80 years old, been ill for about a year, a little bit longer, uh, his context of where he will go down in sports history, he'll be right there near the top as one of the great owners. Magic Johnson openly talking about his relationship with Jerry Buss and what a terrific uh, relationship they had. He was like the other Buss 
children, child. There were four of them. He said, I felt like I was the fifth child. He said, my name wasn't Bust, but I felt like I was. And taught him everything he knew about buying franchises, business, what have you. So um, interesting comments from Magic Johnston today. Also, um, I ran across one of those characters, J.J., on Saturday Night Live. For the most part, Saturday Night Live. I don't know why you watch that show. Because so. I'll tell you what. It's a you bad know, show. No, you know what? One little pearl of wisdom. One little funny moment. For an hour? Yep. I can't waste an hour for Well, you, have, you don't have to use DV, DVR to run <laughs> through it. But, but you don't know which ones are funny. Well, but how are you going to find out, J.J.? You have to watch. I, I like I humor. I think you just watch it because, I mean, that's what you know you do. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a hip guy. No, I don't, I'm just I don't saying, watch it. like, Saturday Night Live has always been like that thing on Saturday. Yeah, I don't, I, that's not for me, really. Well, then why do you watch Because it? I like to laugh sometimes. I like oh, to I got laugh. plenty of shows for you, then. Yeah, no, well, that's not <laughs> my humor. I think about one out of every ten skits. Or oh, characters. Man, that's not a good average. It's, uh, well, I mean, good humor is hard to find, JJ. Uh, I think I think the, our, our guy Anthony Crispino is hilarious. I keep and I think I think Seth Meyers is a brilliant guy, and it's a new per- character out, which I really liked a lot. You have to get into it a little bit, but we'll talk about that later. Her name was uh, Tippy, Tippy, somebody who always ruins punchlines. So uh, we'll tell you about that coming up as well. So lots coming your way, right here on the Voice of Ocala. Stay tuned for more after this time out, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar in Impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. Yes, George. Do you know I'm a truck driver now? What? I call Devin Self Storage at 8730777 and John and Mike now have a mowing truck. Are you cleaning out the garage? Well, I do have time because Devin Self Storage is open late and they're right across from Hobby Lobby on 200. You better call them first and reserve the truck. Why? So I'll know when there's room for the car. Yes, Alice, yes. Digital Graphics Reborn. 
Phoenix Promotional Solutions. When you need vehicle wraps, banners, t-shirts, window graphics, you need to call Phoenix Promotional Solutions at 368-2404. 368-2404. When you need building signs, vehicle wraps, yard signs, realty signs, business cards, you need to call 368-2404. 368-2404. Phoenix Promotional Solutions. Digital Graphics Reborn. Reborn. We have Lena on the phone. Hi, this is Lena with ABC Frederick's Appliance. We service all makes and models and warranty our work and our used appliances from Maytag to Whirlpool, Crosley, and Speed Queen. So stop in at ABC Frederick's Appliance to see our showroom one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue or call 347-2781. That's 347-2781. That's one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Great talking to you again, Lena. See you at ABC Frederick's Appliance. Vets Helping Vets has done it once, and they had such a great time, so they said, let's do it again. It's the second annual Eagle Challenge Golf Tournament on March 16th. Just $60 per player, which includes green fees, cart, and lunch by Sonny's Barbecue. Let's get going and help the Vets Helping Vets help the over 55,000 veterans in the area. March 16th, a great fun day for golf. Call 433-2320 or here at 732-8000. I had to clarify this in a story. I kept wondering last week about how they said a, a guy was on the hood of the car and his girlfriend or whoever, significant other or his fiance or wife, whoever it was, shot through the car and killed her boyfriend, a strange boyfriend. And I, and I, they, they say he was on the hood. And I thought, how do you shoot up under the hood? And apparently he was not on the top of the car. He was on the hood of the car. If you read this story a couple of weeks ago, this this guy came to the home of his girlfriend, um, and apparently she tried to run away, and she got in her car, and he climbed on top of the car and wouldn't get off, and it was threatening her. And apparently, I don't know what all took place during that time, but she pulled out a gun, and she shot him. Um, um, and uh, she'd gone to his house to pick up her three children or to drop off their free children, which, by the way, is, in itself is pretty scary. But uh, that's when Tucker, this guy Tucker, who was uh, her boyfriend, took her car keys. And on her cell phone, she had a sexist set of car keys. Anyway, today, she shot the guy. And uh, the American Shade Service Office came out and said, killing of her ex-boyfriend on the hood was justified. And now said, Nikki McNeil will not be charged in the shooting death for a strange boyfriend who had clung to the hood of her car during the 10-mile drive. 10-mile drive. He was on. 10 miles. 10 miles, which, which makes you wonder how he was able to hang on without her throwing him off. So. But anyway, did you guys think she was going to be guilty of anything? I didn't think she would I, until they let her off. Well, I thought because there had been patterns and everything that she was just, you know, stand her ground. Mm-hmm. Good for her. Well, it was kind of a stand, sort of stand your car uh, situation for sure. But um, She couldn't shake him off, so she shot him. Uh, yeah, apparently so. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly if the gun was registered or legal or whatever, but she shot Well, it, it must have been at a sheriff would have I guess it would have. I guess it would. Anyway, she's done. Um, I watched, uh, I hate to, Tom, this is a spoiler for you, so you might want to close your ears or go to the other room. No, no, down, I'm, down, I, down it doesn't matter. I, I'm watching season two right now. Well, this is so. season three. and um, Well, yeah, it was the uh, final episode of season three. Final episode last night. And, uh, and I sat there watching Downton Abbey thinking, why, why do people like this? Show, and I think it's they like it because, as I said, there's not that much gratuitous violence or gratuitous sex in it. A lot of people get sick of that after a while. Um, uh, and then it also has good; it's well written. It's 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 another culture, so to speak. It's the aristocratic aspect. It's the upper echelon and the lower echelon, by the way, because they have the maid servants and the butler and all that stuff, and show them they're in it as much. They have a big part as the the family does, um, and it's it's a little different. It's a wonderful bucolic setting. If you look at that beautiful, it's not a castle, but it's almost like a castle. It's a manor. building. It's a manor, right? Mansion. And uh, 
It's a Downton Abbey, yeah, and uh, it's a beautiful place in the country. It's, it's a place to explore. What I love to be able to live in a place like that, you know. Of course, you don't see all the things that go with it. Miss um, Joni wouldn't want to live in a place that well, big. Well, she had a maid. Maid, she might be able. Well, to. she may. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, it's been a really good run, and, and it's kind of changed American television. I, I, I predict we'll see offshoots of this. You know what they do in television? They just mock something when they see it successful. So we'll see that. I'm already seeing stories like. It's a story in, in uh, apparently in Rhode Island. Newport used to have those kinds of places back in the, the day. Uh, there's manors, and new, rich New Yorkers used to come there and have this, this whole deal. And there's a tour now, which is the Downton Abbey tour in, 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 new, in Newport, just for that reason, to show them what life was like. It's a lifestyle we would all maybe be aspire to, or just at least be intrigued about. Uh, and uh, last night was the final... Final of, 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 of year three, and uh, just as things were kind of getting pulled together, and and people were sort of pairing up, and and uh, people were, were happy, and what have you. Uh, there was a baby born to uh, to Matthew and his his wife, and uh, who did not have children, had struggled to have them, and Matthew was out in Donegal, another countryside, and. He, he came home, and, and she had had the baby, and he ran to the hospital, and the baby was healthy as a boy, and he was the heir to Down Abbey. He was the heir, so it was a big momentous occasion. He was thrilled. Matthew got in his car, ran back to, the, to, to Down Abbey to be able to tell the rest of the family and picked him up, and guess what happened? Uh, he probably got in the it's the end, last episode, mm-hmm. probably got in a car wreck and died. You got it. They wrote him out of the script. Well, they, you know, that that's cliffhanger. Yeah. It's not a cliffhanger because he's not signed well, no, for no, next year. No, well, you, you say it's not a cliffhanger, but remember Bobby Ewing, uh, Patrick Duffy wasn't signed for Dallas either. And then he sat out a whole year. Yeah. They re-signed True. him. And then, remember, she had just dreamed it all. Yeah. None of it had ever happened. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> this one might be real, though. So, apparently. But anyway, that was the story. That was kind of a, a really good, uh, really well done. Really well, good story. Uh, and uh, enjoyed very much. I went to see a chick flick over the weekend at Marion Theater. What did you go see? I went to see that Safe Haven. How was Juliet. that? You know, it wasn't bad, I, I have to say. I kind of wish I'd have gone to the other one, which was about the uh, the old guys. But uh, I went to the Marion Theater and enjoyed the movie. And uh, uh, Juliet Huff is not only a pretty girl, she's the next Reg- Meg Ryan, without question. She is it. JJ, you like Juliet Huff? From Dancing with the Stars, blonde. You would know if you saw her. Jay just sort of like down on everything, right? He doesn't like Saturday Night Live. He doesn't like movies. He just likes one thing. Miami basketball. That's all he cares about. And that's his life. Saturday Night Live is a bad show. You know well, what? I was just watching the Tippy video. Turn your mic on. By the way. Yeah, you got to have a. Yeah, you got to have your mic on. You've been yeah. talking. I was the whole watching time. the Tippy video, by the way, yeah. buddy. Yeah. I'm not into it. Well, that's we not, play it's it. not sort of you. an audio thing if you want to play some of it. I don't think it'd play well in audio. It's a character that you have to watch for a minute to understand. And if you've known characters like this, and I have, that's why I like Anthony Crispino so much, because I've known a lot of Anthony Crispinos in my lifetime. So I think it's Pretty funny sure. when life and art imitates life. That's what I like. I think... I think the the some of the stuff is pure, as you say, pure garbage. The one on Christ was garbage, you know. And, and as I said, I like Seth Meyers. Now you can't deny that Seth Meyers is funny. He also writes extremely well. His, his newscasts are funny. But I'm not a huge watcher of Saturday Night Live. I like to pick out the nuggets, pick out the nuggets yeah, and say, "Here's I'm, what I like." I'm just saying, I watched a few minutes of it. I, I don't really like it. I don't really. Well, it's like not for you. <laughs> I, I it's guess. Just, uh, you know, well, uh, it, Last night, the Saturday's ver- Saturday's episode was with the whole Jesus uncrossed and all. Did nothing for me. Well, it'd be also help if I knew who the host was. Well, that's the uh, that's the German guy yeah, from uh, Django Unchained. He won. Uh, I, I didn't Christopher, see the movie. Um, but I didn't see the movie. So how would yeah, I? Yeah, but he uh, he was also an Inglorious Bastard. I didn't see that either. Too. Well, he won. You know, he won Supporting Actor uh, Academy Award for yeah. that okay. movie. He's going to win this year for. Uh, Django Unchained. Yeah, he's not what you call a household name. At least I knew Justin no, no. Bieber. I was he uh, about. he may not be a household name to you, but a mm-hmm. lot of people that watch movies, he's been in a lot of movies. Yeah, he's pretty. He's a very good actor. Yeah, and you know the music. The music is really you know there's about you know they went from putting good acts on to putting garage bands on. Yeah, they did. And it's just I'm like 
I've never heard of this group. I'm never going to hear this group unless the host is also a musician, like when Beyonce did it or when Justin well, they had Timberlake Maroon, did Maroon it. Maroon 5 now was Right, right, when Adam was right. from Maroon 5. Yeah. But otherwise, they got somebody like, you know, uh, Jenny's Punk Scar Eye. You know, who, who cares right. about that band? Right. Well, uh, hey, what do we know about pop culture? Let, well, me tell you what, let me tell you what I do know about. You know, we talk about organizations and people who do things in the community all the time. About yes. And we try to champ, hold them up as examples. Uh, and I had uh, had an experience over the weekend I want to share with you, which is I was invited to go MC uh, Friday night, the Boys and Girls Club. Looking quite dapper when you left the bank, by the way. Monkey suit was really hurting me. I was one that couldn't wait to get it off. But, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, but but went there and uh, to Golden, Golden Ocala, beautiful setting. And members of the Boys and Girls Club, who, <clears throat> by the way, probably 95% African-American, not that that really matters, but just a little point of reference there, because really probably there aren't that many African-Americans who belong to Golden Ocala, you know, let's face it, um, and that's what country clubs are. But I, I was so happy they had so many of the kids there. Dressed up, the kids oh, yeah. all, they, they all they they really look they sharp. Come out and they're, now, you've been to them. They're before. very good mm-hmm. kids. They're very good, well-spoken yeah. children. Right. And you could see how these kids had been benefiting from this. Oh, without a doubt, you can. And, and and they had a couple come up and talk. Kids that came from backgrounds that you know were not the best, of them and who have been accepted to four or five colleges, including University of Florida, and you know, and, and they're being they're being recognized for their for their academic work. Jerry Lane and his and his and his team out there. Spectacular they, job. They do they so do. many great I mean, think about it. If you change the the life of one child out there, just one on Friday night, you know, what a what a great accomplishment you'd have done. Think of what you've done for the community to better the community you live in if you help just one. And Jerry Lane helps multitudes of children's children year in and year out. And I, have you ever seen Jerry without a smile on his face? Yeah, I saw him when he was panicking on Friday night, <laughs> trying to get his bill, all this stuff put together. Uh, and I was on the line waiting to get my credential. He says, I need you right away as soon as you get here. I said, Coach, I'm trying to get there. I'm, I'm waiting on this line, you know. Uh, but I saw a lot of people there, a lot of people that I knew, and including our, Mark Emery, who, by yeah. the way, was gave away a uh, an adventure to be auctioned off. There's a lot of nice things. They raised, I'm going to guess they raised twenty to twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three thousand dollars in the auction, silent auction. There, and so, what job well done. And uh, if you don't, if you're looking for a, for something to support, you can't go wrong. The Boys and Girls Club, and this is their Rock with Docs uh, deal on Saturday, Friday night at uh, Golden Ocala. They could sure use the help anytime. So nice going, guys. Appreciate uh, all you do for the community. So. Are you a texter, buddy? Of course, you know I am. Of course I am. Well, you know, I didn't start texting until I got my smartphone. But you didn't start tweeting until you went you to know, work with me. And Ma- the, uh, you know what Match.com is, right? Yes, I do. They don't use it, but I know what it is. Match.com has put out seven texts you should never send in a relationship that's nine months old or younger. Sounds like Dr. Buddy's segment to me. It, 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 I, it, it's a, it's a bit, and every text is sent out. JJ, you you'll say you'll wait be like, until Doctor Buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know that my three things yeah. are really seven things today. Okay, well I'm not sure you can use Doctor Buddy's material on the air. Well, but to I, ask JJ I, about that. I have this. Doctor Buddy didn't have this. Well, I don't think we only have only have one relationship. I want to get Doctor Buddy has to look over. No, I want to get no, no. It has to have the Buddy no, no. Doctor Buddy list. Well, that's because stamp. Tom. No, no. It, actually, no, since Tom doc- thinks it's legit, then it's not good. Yeah, yeah. It's not Doctor Tom now, is it? Well, here's the thing. I want to get Doctor Buddy's reaction to them. Okay, well, well let, we'll share it during. We'll, we'll I'll see if it's suitable material. It is. If it is, then we'll let you go. And bad enough that you want to get all over Nancy Pelosi today. So let me on. tell you about Nancy. Pelosi. Right, go ahead, and get that out. Let's get okay. that over with. All right, Nancy Pelosi, and and this is not not, not against the Democrats. This is re- politicians in general, Republican and Democrat. But Nancy Pelosi was asked this weekend because there's budget, federal budget cuts are going to take place across the board coming soon. And when asked, was Congress going to be part of the budget cuts, Nancy Pelosi said, and even CNN hammered her for this. She can't run for this. She said, I believe it would hurt the integrity of me and my colleagues if we were to take a pay cut. (laughs) She literally said it would hurt the integrity of her and her colleagues in Congress who are 
majority breadwinners in their families. Those of us here, our co- my, myself and my colleagues, we're the breadwinners of our family. It would hurt the integrity of us if we were to take a pay cut. Are you kidding me? That's the problem in Washington, buddy. And it just happened to be it was Nancy Pelosi. But I'm pretty sure John McCain and John Boehner and those guys think that it probably hurt their integrity if they get a pay cut. The too. biggest problem they got is they're all insulated against reality. They, they don't certainly really, are. They don't really know how tough it is. You talk about hurting your integrity, try not having a paycheck at all, try not be able to be able to buy food for your kids. You know that's what that hurts more. Than Having to go to a food kitchen and ask for a handout—that's yeah. a—that's a shot to your integrity. I have no problem with them making money because they we 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 want them to be able to maintain that as a full-time job and not be moonlighting and whatever. I have no problem while we pay them. I just want them to be tuned into what the problems are out here in the real world. And when a remark like that, no matter who makes it, is further proof they're not in touch with reality. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And it, it, this isn't a, it just so happens that it is a legislator that I don't agree with. But I'm pretty sure pretty that sure. all the, I'm pretty sure all the millionaires up there in Washington, none of them want to take a pay cut. Because let's be honest, buddy, you and I don't like to take pay cuts. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I just like to get some pay. Well, so, uh, JJ. <laughs> so, I mean, if we're make, we don't make near what they make ho- ever, and it would mess with their integrity to take a pay cut. There you go. All right, I want you and JJ to think about this. This is a long-standing issue that gets us upset every time, and we fig- we want to know why it happens, and nobody can do anything about it. And a lot of politicians claim they're doing something about it, and you hear all this stuff about how. We're actually producing this stuff more and more, and yet gas prices keep going up. Oh, no. Here's more. More of the same thing. 32 straight days, okay? So, I mean, look. I heard this on CNN this morning and heard a politician tell, yeah. heard somebody tell me why it was happening. Well, I'm going to talk about it next. I'm saying, you know, let's don't even talk about it anymore. If you can, at least try to do something about it, all right? Because, obviously, you can't. And Why? I know this is cap- I know this is capitalism. It's, it's free enterprise, all that stuff. But somehow, some way, we'll, we'll talk about it after the break right yeah. here on the Voiceville Column. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none. And we have uh, state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. Hi, I'm Russ with Climate Control Mechanical Services. And I want to invite you to tune in every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. to listen for tips and answers to the many questions you may have about your air conditioning and heating for your home or business. The Climate Control Show, every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. right here on WOCA, 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source.
pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine featuring local businesses and issues and written by local volunteers. Lady Lake Magazine has become a must-read in Marion, Lake, and Sumter counties, audited by Circulation Verification Council and serving the area for 23 years. Plus, Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. All we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 352-804-1223 and pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Why is everyone so obsessed with virtual reality and high definition? My neighbor came over yesterday to show me the photographs he took of the pansies and dianthus that I got from Kenny's Place Nursery. He had this electronic pad, and with the flip of his finger, he showed me these beautiful shots he took in my garden. And then he said, you can almost smell them. That's when I used my finger and motioned him to the garden, and then pointing with my cursor, also known as my finger, I pointed toward the real flowers from Kenny's Place Nursery, and I said, I can smell them. Instead of virtual reality, I enjoy real reality. But it is more than the beauty of the pansies and dianthus and more than their fragrance. It's the way they move in the breeze. It's the butterflies and bees that are attracted to them. You know, the plants I get from Kenny's Place Nursery from my garden in the real world provide me with an outdoor sanctuary to escape from that virtual world. Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. Kenny's Place Nursery, where the plants, the people, and the mission are all beautiful. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. WOCA! This is Tom Schmitz live in the WCA studios with this news break brought to you by Renstar Medical Research. The Ocala Star Banner is reporting a two-month-old Ocala baby is being treated after drinking bleach given to her by her father. Police arrested Herman Washington, 20, and charged him with aggravated child abuse after he confessed to pouring bleach into the child's body, bottle and feeding it to her. Lieutenant Scott Fossler said that Washington told investigators he didn't mean to harm the child. He had hoped the bleach would help with the child's chronic congestion problems. This news up. This news break was brought to you by Renstar Medical Research, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Call 352-629-5800 for more information. The stupid and they're stupid. You know what I'm saying? That that that's, that's worse uh, than stupid. That's a lie. Uh, how, how could you ever 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 think something like that? Because he lied. He must have been on dope. That's all I got to say. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, oh, I thought it'd clear up the child's chest congestion. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Don't try that home remedy. Um, you know, today is President's Day. Tom, you like to talk about knowing you know a lot about the presidents. Uh, I know quite a bit. Uh, remember the Lincoln movie? and uh, Was it Robert Todd Lincoln? Uh, the, there was a son that had to go off and go to... Yes. War, war didn't his, Lincoln didn't want him to. Right. He lost to other children, whatever. Mm-hmm. Read a nice story today. This came from Henry Holly here in town from via Larry Todd, my former classmate, my Lincoln's son. Listen to this oddity, okay? Among all the things that happened to Robert Todd Lincoln, he was standing on a train platform in Jersey City in his twenties in a crowd of pastors trying to buy sleeping berths from the conductor. The train moved. Robert was standing so close to the train that spun him around and sent him dropping into the space between the train and the platform Mm -hmm. against the moving train threatening to crush him. Suddenly, a hand grabbed Robert by the back of his neck of his coat and pulled him up to the platform. Quick reaction by a solidly strong man that may have well saved Robert's life. And you know what the real oddity of it? Guess who that was? John Wilkes Booth. It was actually the brother of John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, I knew it, it was, was somebody. I knew it was Edwin a... Booth, who, of course, was the brother of who the you know, was. You know where I heard that story first? No, I do not. Paul Harvey's The Rest of the Story. He was some great ones, for sure. So who is your favorite president? My favorite president? Mm-hmm. See... Ooh. You think about it. We'll come back to That's it. That's a tough it's, question. It's President's, I, it's President's Day all day. Let me get to the question. Let me get to the thing about the gas. Gas. This is one of those things in the moment when you have uh, a net your network moment. Remember the movie Network when the guy goes to the window and 
I'm sick and tired of this. I'm not going to take it anymore. Right. Moments. I mean, this is an old issue and one that I almost don't even bother reading. Or, But it just, just, you just think, what is wrong with this picture? How can gas prices go up 32 consecutive days? Now, I've been reading all these stories about how we're drilling more oil in America. You know, all of a sudden, what, what state is this? Is it like Idaho or Montana or someplace? They're drilling like crazy up there. The whole the whole economy. Yeah, the, 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 it's Mon- it's it's Montana where all those millionaires have become all of a sudden. I don't know one of those states, a couple of them, and Wyoming's probably too. People are drilling gas again, and, and it, it's gone up thirteen percent over that period of time to three dollars and seventy three cents. Now, you know, I guess it's inevitable that the American public, pardon my French, is just going to be screwed by the oil industry. Just you know, just how it is. I mean, I guess there's, I guess there's nothing we can ever do about it. You know, I guess we're going to continue to buy cars that burn gasoline, and I guess you know we're going to rely. I, I keep hearing how oh, if we drill, we'll bring the prices down. Well, did I just say 32 straight days we're drilling more oil? We drill probably in 10 years. It's not helping. Something's not. Just like a certain president said at a convention, do the math. Tell me how that can work. I don't get it. Well, I watched CNN this. I was I was on the CNN kick this yes, morning. Right. What happened to Fox News, man? Uh, uh, well, I just yeah, they, they're crazy. So I watched CNN this morning, and um, an analyst said the reason that this gas prices is doing this because we're running out of supply. Mm-hmm. And I said, huh? Like you said, we're drilling more and everything. But mm-hmm. they said, well, the winter supply is dwindling down, and the summer supply hasn't hit the market because it's two different types of gasoline and because there's more people on the road or something so the gla- gas got to burn cleaner I don't I don't really understand it yeah what is that the but, refineries are shut down to prepare for their summer gas right but hello a, a wise man said namely you buddy Martin what don't they know summer and winter happen every year exactly <laughs> I don't get it I don't get it Anyway, so, I mean, you can't, I guess I guess we're going to continue to have it. I'm going to continue to dislike it. I'm going to continue, continue to gripe about it. Because why? Because we can. Yes. <clears throat> um, coming up um, next hour, Maury Dean will join us talking about the Fort King Project. And uh, we'll have Dr. Buddy in the house as well, um, along with qu- tweets and quotes. And the sports hour, Coach Steve Spurrier joins us at 530 Coach Spurrier comes on once or twice a year with us, and uh, we'll check with his latest information and concern and thoughts. I know all the stuff about clowning was uh, in the news here a couple of days ago. We'll get his take on that. And uh, I want to get some ideas from him because he's a thinker about some of these rule changes we talked about last week, uh, the, the proposed rule change in college football. See what he thinks about it because I think that's uh, certainly something that uh, could impact the game next year. And I'll get his thoughts about some of these uh, things like the, what's the one I complained about last with about the one number one one player one position one team or something that's one and this spiking the ball guarantee you'll have something to say about spiking the ball uh, I wonder what his take on that is if he thinks it would be good or it would be bad all right have you thought about your presidents yet I, I have um, I would have to say my favorite president and this isn't what I consider the best president but my favorite president. Mm-hmm. Would be Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. Just because Teddy has had, from all accounts, reading papers of his and reading books of his and reading memoirs and all, Teddy pretty much had the same kind of, you know, bull in a china shop, full speed ahead, no mm-hmm. filters attitude that somebody near and dear to, oh yeah, me, that I have. So for that reason, Teddy Roosevelt's probably my favorite president. By no means do I believe he's the best president, but he's in the running. But not he's definitely well. Among my favorite. the things he did was he he his national state parks, parks was yeah. great. He, he, he created Teddy. a national park system. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Ocala National Forest probably. So uh, they, they, he did a great Remember, job on that. He he's the one that got us. He's the one that set the precedent that makes us believe we should go all over the world though and play police because he said walk softly and carry a big stick. Yeah, charge up San Juan Hill. Uh, I you know. I could make a different case of different presidents at different times. But the more I read about the, the early presidents, now that I'm reading, still reading the, the Jefferson book long, um, by power, I uh, have a great respect for those people because their lives were imperiled. 
You know, and the way everybody talks about George Washington was such great reverence. He was such a such a figure, a well a learned man, right. a great general. You know, um, I, I don't know enough about Washington to, to weigh him against a Reagan or a Clinton or a Kennedy or whoever. Um, you know, and some of the really good men didn't make good necessarily good presidents during that time uh, because of their own personal feelings and political views. Well, about John him. Adams never gets credit as being one of the best presidents, but he certainly was one of the best presidents, but because he was so unlike and not a likable person, he doesn't get the credit that he duly deserves. Yeah, you know, Harry Truman's very popular now. He wasn't only popular then. He had to pull the trigger. He had to push that. Yeah, red he button. had to, uh, there, was was no, there was no red phone then. No, that was his finger. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's the guy. And uh, he's the one who actually, uh, when, you know, when, they, when the railroads went on the strike, you know what he did? Fired him. No, no. He told him he was going to have to, have to go oh, to the Army. Oh, that was Reagan. The drafter. Fired. Drafter. That was the air That was Reagan that fired the air traffic controllers. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, is that the way to run a country? I mean, I don't know. Uh, he was giving hell Harry. You know, he was uh, he was a small guy, but apparently a very determined, gritty guy. Uh, he's a very popular guy now. Uh, and then you get to Lincoln. Certainly Lincoln, you know, given the, the recent, and you say it's not historically correct or accurate, but Lincoln is somebody you'd have to embrace because you know, he helped save the Union, right? He did. He helped keep a union together. And remember, as the movie portrays, he helped push through the 13th Amendment, which said constitutionally that all men are created equal. That's correct. That was the deal, and he, he had a bigger, he had a great view of what had to be done there and how did it be done. Understand power. I was thinking about presidents today who did, who pretty much did nothing, you know. And you think about Gerald Ford. What did he do? Uh, fell down a lot. He just basically took over for a uh, for Nixon for a sick officer. At the he time. took over for Nixon because yeah. Spiro Agnew had already been indicted, right. so he wasn't vice that, president. That anymore. was about the sorriest. Period of time. All Gerald Ford is is a trivia question. Do you well, know? And he's a really neat, decent man, by the way. He, That's great. why they put him in office. Right. But the trivia question is, who's the only vice president and president never elected to office? Yeah. And the answer is Gerald Ford. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I met him, by the way, out at Vail. He had a golf tournament. He was a charming guy and, and his wife, Betty. Uh, not that I know him personally, but I did get a chance to meet him. Uh, and I, But I didn't. he didn't do a whole lot. You know, Eisenhower... You know, this Eisenhower had the silent generation where nobody did anything, said anything. In the 50s, he did build the interstate system, which was really for military, militarily for to get transport, logistically to get things transported. But, uh, you know, Eisenhower, he was a, you know, I, I don't know how he'd be rated. Probably in the middle of the pack, so. Well, the interstate system, though, for travel and for linking the country was a huge, of course it was a huge deal. It wasn't and, built for that, though. But Eisenhower gets a lot of credit. He gives a lot of presidential credit for his endeavors that he did before he was president when he was the supreme, uh, when he was the leader of the Command. Supreme Command yeah. up over in Europe during World War II. Different job, though. Different job. So. But that's the same reason Washington gets a lot of credit because he led the Continental Army and led America to its freedom and then became president. Yeah. But he gets a lot of credit for what he did as the general of the Continental Army. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll finish up Hour 1. Stay tuned for Maury Dean at the top of the hour right here in the Voice of Ocala. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. Source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Relations got you down. Are you at your wit's end? Does the opposite sex just confuse you? Then I've got the solution for you, Dr. Buddy. Well, let me just tell you what you slugs are doing wrong. 
Remember, dummy, it's about the chase and the romantic interludes, okay? Now, here's the difference. Instead of dinner and a movie, which seems obsolete these days, uh, they have these, these random phone text, Facebook post, instant message, and quote-unquote non-dates. Traditional courtship, which is still what women want, guys. Picking up a telephone, asking someone on a date, maybe even going as far to pick them up in your car, mm-hmm. requires courage, strategic planning, and a considerable investment in ego. So now you know where to tune in to get all your relationship advice. It's the Dr. Buddy Show every Monday on The Voice of Ocala. You can succeed only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. On the next AM Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Ernie D. Stefano, sports agent, founder of Operation Comeback, and a certified sports counselor, coming out to speak about his book, The Happy Athlete, a success guide for parents, coaches, and student athletes. Open for debate where both sides of one issue will be discussed. And then Carol Ann Baldwin will be in the studio answering your questions about your gardens and your lawns on You've Got a Garden. Jeremy Lee is an historian and a playwright. He's written a book called Kings of New York. It's a novel based on history. And then it's Damage Control with your hosts Joe Reichel and Rob Sobieski from Damage Control Services. They come in each week to explain what it takes to make us whole again when our homes are struck by damage. And then on the air with us is legendary Carl Reiner. He's an award-winning actor, producer, director, and writer. He's best known for creating the Dick Van Dyke Show, and now he's written his memoir called I Remember Me. All of that plus fun with Joe on the next AM Ocala Live right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. In Clark, we trust. Hi, this is Clark Howard. Join me every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. Hello, this is Dr. Riyad Fakuri, chiropractic orthopedist at the Fakuri Medical and Chiropractic Center. Listen in to the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday, 11 a.m., right here on WOCA. Learn how your body works so that you can help yourself. We're available to answer your questions every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on WOCA, The Source. That's Dr. Riyad Fakuri on the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday, 11 a.m., right here on WOCA, The Source. Hi, I'm Ernie Sprantz. Join me weekday mornings at 1050 for Report to Consumers. Consumer news you can use from your hometown station. News Talk 1370, WOCA. This is WOCA, News Talk 1370. Hey, welcome back to the program. Voice for Color. Buddy Mark here with along with Tom Schmitz. Uh, last Friday at Gateway Bank, we debuted our new program, which is bi monthly now. And it's called Ask the Cops. It features the chief of police, Greg Graham, the sheriff as well, Chris Blair. And we get a chance to spend an hour with them and ask any question we want to ask, which is pretty cool. We'll do this every other Friday. We had a last one last Friday. And uh, we'll, you're welcome to call, ask questions then. But in the in- inaugural show, we talk, sat down and talked with them and asked him, how were things since they were both relatively new in office, Chris Blair only five or six weeks, and Greg Graham only about a year? Give me a 60-second update of what's happened to the sheriff's office. Well, you know, you know, my first uh, five weeks in there, you know, the big thing is just looking at the organization and uh, studying it. And uh, we're um, basically looking at a lot of feedback. We're bringing uh, retirees back to the sheriff's office, uh, evaluators, along with some community uh, leaders and business people to actually to go into the sheriff's office, engage with our people there, uh, the employees, to try to get some feedback and uh, so that we can look at the entire organization from a different perspective. And uh, we'll make changes and um, do our organizational structure from that from that feedback. And, and Greg, hasn't been that long ago you were doing the same thing with your department. Uh, yeah, I've been back a year now. January 15th is a year. And, uh, you know, I truly believe, as does uh, the sheriff, that the people that best know how to run the organization are the people 
people actually do the work of the organization. That's those men and women that are out there every day uh, answering those calls for service, dealing with the public. So, you know, I did the same thing. I sought a lot of input uh, and engaged uh, the the men and women that work there. And you know, we've uh, we made some pretty significant changes and some small changes, and they've been part of the process. And uh, it's gone really well. I tell you, I, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm so honored to be back in Ocala, uh, but certainly even more honored to to uh, have the opportunity to work and uh, and play with the men and women that uh, belong to the Ocala Police Department. All right, here you go, <clears throat> Sheriff uh, Blair and Chief Graham uh, with us twice a month. You'll hear bites uh, all during the week from the two top and law enforcement officers in the county, and uh, look forward to, to bringing that to you again on a regular basis. Business-wise, although we've gotten some pretty good news, another business I see is moving here. I saw over the weekend. Uh, it's actually an old one. It's the one that the trucking company, they're starting this software deal uh, on the old uh, the building over there where uh, Taylor Bean and Whitaker were. Right. That's, so we're getting to be like a Silicon Valley here, all these little uh, companies coming in with software, with computers and software, whatever. Anyway, uh, that's going to enjoy employees some people. So we're getting some good news on that front. Then you see this story, you think what's happened to the national economy. This story of today off uh, posted by um, off Bloomberg says it got its hands on some internal emails exchanged by Walmart executives discussing recent sales figures, and they do not paint a very pretty picture. The memo, the private memo said February... MTD month to date sales are a total disaster, according to the vice president of finance and logistics, uh, Jerry Murray, in his February 12th email. It says, The worst start to a month I've seen in my seven years with the company. Hmm. Now, that's not a good news. That's either. never good when you, they say it's the, the worst month you've seen in the seven year history of being with the company. And Walmart. You know, Walmart, a company, a place where America shops. Well, can I tell you this? They're not hurting because of the lack of time going in there and spending money. I know. There's th- there. It means they're just down. But uh, that's uh, that's that's an indication. There's uh, there's some there's some serious stuff happening in the economy. Let's hope it turns around. All right. Coming up next hour, Maury Dean will join us. Maury will talk about the project at Fort Kings, Fort King, which you should know about, and I should know about. He'll be here to discuss that. Also in the next hour, Doctor Buddy will be here. We'll weigh in on. Five things men women wish women knew about them. I uh, wish women knew. Um, and uh, coming up in the sports hour, Steve Spurrier from South Carolina will join us for a chat about what's happening in the SEC football world right here on The Voice of Ocala. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Sword. Are you bored, tired, and disgusted with your old car? Hey, this is Cupid, Chris Spears from Prestige Auto Sales. I want you to love your car, so trade in the old car you hate. Even if you're still making payments. Even if you owe more than it's worth. And I'll help you drive a nicer, newer car sooner than you ever thought possible. Plus, when you use your tax refund as a down payment, you'll get a lot nicer, newer car. So you can hook up with a car you love today. Bad credit? Cupid got you down? Our For the People credit approval specialists are world-class matchmakers. They'll connect you with the lender most likely to approve your loan. Hate your old car? Dump it and fall in love with a nicer, newer car today, even if you have more than it's worth or still making payments. Plus, turn your tax refund into your down payment and save a lot on a car you'll love. Hurry, this love fest ends when we match 57 people with a car of their dreams. I'm Chris Spears, and I'm a dealer for the people. Visit me in Ocala or Bellevue. Online at PrestigeSaysYes.com. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. 
Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes. And I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. It's time to crown the King of the Wing and the Prince of Pizza at the 7th Annual King of the Wing Competition on Thursday, February 28th at ARC Marion, 2800 Southeast Mary Camp Road in Ocala. This event features all-you-can-eat wings and pizza from all over town. Advanced tickets are $20 for adults or $15 for kids. Proceeds benefit developmentally disabled adults at ARC Marion. Visit www.kingofthewing.com or call 352-351-2479 for more info. Hi, Brittany here from Mike Scott Plumbing. We're well into the new year, the world didn't end, and now you have all those new year resolutions you haven't even started on. So here's an idea. Take the money you are going to waste on those late night infomercials for some weight loss gadget that doesn't even work, and do something that will work. Like a new bathtub, or that new kitchen sink you've had your eye on. Not only will it look good, but it would add value to your home. Did you know that Mike Scott Plumbing has a brand new showroom just across from the new Brownwood Square? in addition to the main showroom in Hernando. So wherever you are, it's just a short drive away. Let our showroom specialists get you one step closer to the kitchen and bath of your dreams. Call us today, 237-2888. That's 237-2888. And check us out on the web, mikescottplumbing.com. And remember, if water runs through it, we do it. Mike Scott Plumbing. The Daytona 500. On February 24th, it will prove once again why this is the race of a lifetime. Every time. Like in 1998, when a 20-year quest ends with one of racing history's most timeless moments. Dale Earnhardt is going to win the Daytona 500 in his 20th try. And a son carries on that family legacy in 2004. Dale Earnhardt Jr., you are a Daytona 500 champion. Congratulations. Or 2011, when a 20-year-old underdog shocks the world. Trevor Bain playing defense. He's out in front at age 20. He's going to win the 53rd Daytona 500. Join us Sunday, February 24th at Daytona International Speedway for the next chapter of the Great American Race with the 55th running of the Daytona 500. Great seats can still be yours. Select tickets for kids 12 and under a half price. And there's plenty of free parking. Get your tickets now at 1-800-PIT-SHOP or go to Daytona500.com. In Clark, we trust. Hi, this is Clark Howard. I'm so excited to be on in Ocala, where I visit twice a year because I have relatives in Ocala, and it's great that my show is on every evening at 6 p.m. right here on WOCA, The Source. Marion County's Information Station, WOCA, News Talk 1370. WOCA. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Transportation Safety Board to look into the nightmarish crews of the Carnival Triumph following a, an engine room fire in the Gulf of Mexico. A second lawsuit has been filed by a passenger against the cruise ship line. A former boyfriend says Mindy McCreary or McCready threatened to kill herself earlier this month after she lost custody of her sons but was somehow released from rehab anyway. McCready died yesterday from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound at her Arkansas home. She'd struggled with addiction and arrests. Burger King said it reached out to Twitter to suspend its account after an apparent hack attack. Burger King's Twitter picture was suddenly changed to a McDonald's logo featuring McDonald's new Fish McBites. A baby lowland gorilla born at a South Texas zoo last month is headed to Ohio, to the Cincinnati Zoo, because the baby's mother has been ignoring her. This is ABC News. Identity Guard, giving you the power. I'm retired federal agent and Identity Guard spokesperson Doug Hess. Your social security number, credit card, and bank accounts are who you are. Knowing if this information is exposed online is essential to keeping them secure. Few people have the time or know-how to keep track of it all. Identity Guard is here to help you stay on top of it. But first, here's today's tip. 
Your Social Security and credit card account numbers are as specific to you as your fingerprints. Email, phone, and text messages are not secure. Don't include these important numbers in any of them. This tip is just one more way Identity Guard is giving you the power in 2013. Go to IdentityGuard.com slash protection and try Identity Guard's most comprehensive protection. You'll receive three credit scores and credit monitoring for 30 days, free. The first 500 to take advantage of this offer will also receive a document shredder, free. Visit IdentityGuard.com slash protection. I'm just sick of all the amateur stuff, you know? I mean, like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value, you know? Like some editing, transition, something, some music. Don't worry. We didn't leave you. He's gone. He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Our bosses say we got to stay. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. It's time for the second hour of The Voice of Ocala. Hoo-ha! You ever come across anything like time travel? Come on. Stick around. It's free. If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win. All right, like the man said, hour two of the program called The Voice of Ocala on a blustery, cooling, chilling Monday. Looks like it's going to get down low again tonight. Uh, hopefully not 25. Uh, <clears throat> but more than chilly last night. My pleasure to welcome back to these studios. He's been here many times for a variety of roles. This time he comes bearing papers <laughs> and uh, <laughs> maps and charts and all that stuff. And it's something that's fascinating to talk about. And I hope we can get it all in in the next 30 minutes. Let's get right to it. Welcome back, Maury Dean. How are you, Maury? I'm great, buddy, and thank you so much for having me. It's uh, always an honor to be here and uh, be able to share some things about our fantastic community. Well, first of all, thank you for everything you did with the honor flights. You know, th- th- that's that's number one because that's uh, that's something that's uh, special, and I know you're driving force behind that. So thank you for doing that. Well, it uh, it has been such an honor to do it. I tell you, the uh, it was. It's been so much more than I ever anticipated. Uh, the, the friendships and camaraderie that uh, has been able to be reestablished. And uh, uh, for me to be on flights with some of America's greatest heroes is mm. just, uh, I can't, words just don't describe what that experience is like. I mean, these are the guys that were walking on the shores of Normandy and Iwo Jima and, uh, and just all over the world and, and literally saved our world in World War II. That's the reason they call them the greatest generation right there. So, well, let's get to the. To, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not a history buff, but I'm very interested in history, especially of Marin County and Ocala. And I've read quite a few things about it. I don't know a lot about this subject except what I've just read here and there. I don't know that anybody knows a lot about it except maybe you. And I'm looking forward to this half hour. Tom is a history major. Um, uh, to know more about Fort King. So rather than assume everybody knows what it is and where right, it is, right. why don't you start out by telling us, first of all, where it is, which, of course, is east of here, and then talk about its present state and take us back to when it started and what it was. Because it's extremely essential to the history of Florida because it played a big role militarily in our in our state. You're, you're, you're definitely uh, correct. The, the amazing thing about it, and uh, I guess the exciting thing for me is I, I grew up out in that area and as a kid, and I remember when Fort King was still a dirt trail out there, and the county used to grade it every couple, you know, maybe every six, seven, eight months or whatever because there'd be ruts in the road, and uh, we could walk down there and pick up musket balls and, you know, pieces of uh, clay pipes that they used to use and stuff like that as a kid. And uh, But the, the most amazing thing to me is, is over the last probably um, decade and a half that I've learned how enormous this piece of ground was in not just Ocala's history, not just Florida's history, but in America's history. Hmm. Uh, and the reason being is, is that Fort King was the headquarters for the territory of Florida after we acquired it from the Spanish. And um, it's, uh, you know, the things that happened for over three decades uh, during the first, second, and third Seminole Wars uh, was a major piece of American history. So all the readings that I have been doing and uh, things, and and as I was mentioning earlier, I can talk about some of this for hours because the detail is so Let me just draw some things out of here because, you you like you say, you're a book on this stuff. First of all, I I think it's important to get established the time period. We're talking early 1800s, right? Yes. Uh, Essentially what happened is uh, there was a a treaty uh, after we took over Florida. There was a treaty to establish a reservation in Florida. 
Uh, and this treaty was between the, it was the Treaty of Moultrie Creek, uh, between the, uh, the Seminoles in Florida and, uh, and the U.S. government. Uh, out of that, they established a reservation that ran essentially north of what's now Ocala, all the way down to uh, basically a line that kind of went across from Lakeland to uh, uh, that area across the state. And it was essentially in the center of the state and uh, over four million acres. And uh, so as part of that, they established an Indian agency here. Well, guess where the Indian agency was established? It was right here. Uh, matter of fact, I've got a picture of it. And um, it, it was a pretty uh, stylish building because they gave it such high presence uh, in terms of what they were doing. Um, it, it was built right here, and uh, we know essentially about where it was at and that kind of thing. That was in 1825. Okay. So this is the time period that we're talking about. Uh, when we the, get we into not had some of the war yet, right? The, we had not well, actually, they uh, they had had, had the one? start of okay. that. Okay. Uh, the start of that was uh, was prior to that, and that's kind of what brought on this whole issue of of having a treaty and establishing the reservation. It started in the Panhandle. Okay. Andrew Jackson was asked to come down to Florida at that time. He had come through East Georgia, right, actually through Atlanta. On the way up through there, I know, because my my family settled behind him. Is that right? Had land lotteries in, in the east of Atlanta. So we can blame Jackson on that. <laughs> no question about it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, Jackson was there. But, but a lot of people did. But he, was, was, he was an amazing guy. But he came to the panhandle. Mm -hmm dealt with some of the early issues that they had and they had some conflicts and so forth and then he went back to Nashville and uh, before he did that he became the territorial governor for a short period of time and uh, then went back to Nashville and then later ran for uh, for president uh, as I said the Indian agency for the territory and the reservation was established in 1825 two years later Fort King was built okay. and that was to provide some military presence um, it was tied to basically uh, Tampa. There was Fort Brook in Tampa, and uh, it wasn't uh, too long after that that they actually built the Fort King Road. And I've I've actually got a book. It was a platted road of all things, amazingly. And uh, so we've got a record of every step it was made. They had surveyors that had to take oaths that you wouldn't believe the oath they had to take to certify that they had platted this correctly back in that time period. Um, but anyway, it came to Fort King. It wasn't built from Fort King to Tampa. It was built from Tampa to Fort King. And that was so that they could get supplies, get troops up this way when they needed to and that kind of thing. Well, it, uh, it gets to a point where uh, after 1827, after the forts built and so forth, as it gets into the early uh, 1830s, uh, around 1832 and 1833, that uh, more settlers are moving in and a lot more conflict starts occurring because the Indians that are here at that time, uh, they start seeing this as kind of a kind of an evasion, uh, invasion, I should say, of, of settlers, and they know that's just going to create uh, some hardship for them. It's already happened of Georgia. It's it, already happened. I can tell it, you the it year. Had, it had. 1800 was a land lottery east of Atlanta. That's when it took place in Jackson. Well, they began and, coming south. Of and, and what went along with that, and just prior to that, was the, the war between the Creeks and the Cherokees in North Georgia. And, of course, the Cherokees won. Uh, the Creeks now are kind of the, the renegades. They start, and they're kind of a farming uh, type of uh, group, so they're trying to set up little farms and stuff around Georgia. Well, guess what? The plantation owners and the folks that had farms yeah. didn't like that. Want that yeah. So it happened that Florida, and this is something that, that a lot of people don't realize, uh, the Seminoles were not the first native Indians. Yeah, the Timaquans. The Timaquans yeah. well, were. Let's stop it right there and come okay. back. I want to get to the Timaquans, who, by okay. the way, were big farmers. Yes. They did a lot of stuff. And I want yes. to find out where we're going to plug Osceola in at this point. Okay. Now, now those three wars. Yes. The one thing I learned in ROTC, I remember, <laughs> in Florida, the one thing was the bloodiest wars we ever fought in this soil by far Seminole Indian Wars. Yes. So we'll let Mari Dean pick it up from there. Okay. On the other side, we'll take a break right here in the Voice of Ocala. 
1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new Old Fashioned Bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. Today on Ocala Live, Robert and I will be speaking to Ernie D. Stefano, sports agent, founder of Operation Comeback, and a certified sports counselor. Coming out to speak about his book, The Happy Athlete, a success guide for parents, coaches, and student athletes. Open for debate where both sides of one issue will be discussed. And then Carol Ann Baldwin will be in the studio answering your questions about your gardens and your lawns on You've Got a Garden. Jeremy Lee is an historian and a playwright. He's written a book called Kings of New York. It's a novel based on history. And then it's Damage Control. Control with your hosts Joe Reichel and Rob Sobieski from Damage Control Services. They come in each week to explain what it takes to make us whole again when our homes are struck by damage. And then on the air with us is legendary Carl Reiner. He's an award-winning actor, producer, director, and writer. He's best known for creating the Dick Van Dyke Show, and now he's written his memoir called I Remember Me. All of that plus fun with Joe on the next day of Color Live right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. If you add zero plus zero plus zero, it adds up to what? Zero. For a limited time, you can drive a new 2013 Ford Fiesta Focus Fusion Edge Escape or Explore with zero down, zero do it signing, and zero first month payment. But if you're one who might need a little more influence, how about we include another zero? A three year, 45,000 mile complimentary basic maintenance plan. That's just the way we roll at Ford Lincoln of Ocala. It's the power of 4G. Great brands at great prices with great service from great people. You can miss out on a lot of things in life, but whatever you do, be sure not to miss this extraordinary opportunity to drive a new Ford with zero down, zero do it signing, zero first month payment, and no charge three year basic maintenance during Ford Lincoln of Ocala's sign and ride event. Browse our inventory from the comfort of your home at FordofOcala.com, but you're still going to have to come in. You see, it's called a sign and ride event. See dealer for details. Hey, welcome back. During the breaks, you're having a historical tutorial here with Maury Dean. <laughs> Got the big green map out, looking at the trail that the Indians took and the, the government removal program of the Native American and so on and so forth. We could cover two hours, but we got 15 minutes left. Let's pick it up at Osceola because 
he's where is he plugged in now? Let's talk about his background and how he got down here, and that famous statue that we all saw. Yes. There was one in Silver Springs where he yes. stuck the knife to the tree, Correct. which I don't even know if it ever happened, but it didn't happen here. It happened someplace else, right? No, it did happen here. Happened here? Yes. I always heard it happened someplace else. No, it happened okay. here. It All right. Well, here. tell us tell us about Osceola. Okay. Osceola was, a, was an amazing individual. He uh, he was born on uh, up in the Panhandle, just kind of on the border of uh, where Florida and, and Alabama is at, um, in a small village there. His mother was Creek. His father was English. And uh, his father's name was Powell. So back in the times of the 1830s, it was just as much common for um, the soldiers and the Americans to call him Powell rather than Osceola. Osceola hmm. was his Indian name. Um, he had so he a had village. knowledge of their ways. He knew, he knew about the white man. Oh, yes, very much so, very much so. And, um, you know, the, the, the interesting part about it is is that so many of them that came, uh, and we were talking briefly about the Timaquans, we can, we can discuss that a little bit, but to, mm-hmm. to get back to Osceola, um, uh, they, they did. And they, uh, it wasn't uncommon for them to, uh, to, to do farming and that kind of thing. So as the Seminoles settled in this area, they actually had, it wasn't just villages, they called them towns. There was, Powell's town was Osceola's town. It was just on the... Uh, west side of the Withlacoochee River, um, uh, just uh, north of about where Dade City's at, um, and uh, he used to traverse from there all over Central Florida uh, to where they got involved. Uh, Osceola was not actually they, he's so often referred to as a, a chief, but he was really became a war chief. Uh, he wasn't uh, wasn't one of the official chiefs as such. But uh, he carried a lot of weight with the chiefs, and uh, each of the little uh, towns or villages that they had, and they were all over Marion County, needless to say, uh, Cahojo's town and Mathless town, and I mean, I go on a list of names, um, that uh, the, one of the oldest one was uh, uh, Cuscawilla, which was up uh, in an area in Marion County, but just south of McIntosh, uh, not McIntosh, south of Micanopy and west of McIntosh. And uh, it was a pretty sizable village. But anyway, uh, as far as Osceola was concerned, what happened is the treaty that was um, the Moultrie uh, Creek Treaty granted this four, ma- four million acre reservation to the Seminoles for a 30 year period. And after five years, they decided to uh, tell them that they needed to go to Oklahoma. And the reason for that was, as all the settlers were moving in, the hostilities were growing because. Um, trying to basically scare the settlers out. They would go and raid their crops and farms and this and that. Um, and uh, there was a lot that was going on back and forth uh, in that. Uh, so when when they kept pressing the issue, Osceola seemed to be the only one that would really stand up to this and say, wait a minute, all we want is what you said you were going to give us. And uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the other chiefs, very much so. And... Uh, all the other chiefs were basically kind of buying into it. They sold their their uh, little towns and cattle and everything else and said, hey, we'll go to Oklahoma. Matter of fact, they even took a group of them and sent them out there and said, uh, uh, we're going to go out there and show you what it's like and that kind of thing. Of course, when they got out there, they kind of got, got them liquored up, had another contract for them to sign or treaty to sign, put their X on. Uh, Osceola didn't like any of that. And uh, so he really stood up against that. Um, now, was, the, what, he was here in, in, the, in Ocala, Marion County. Well, his village was actually west of the, and of he, the Withlacoochee, and but he, he was okay. up here quite but, a bit. Yeah, but during this during this whole thing yes. with, uh, with, with, with the Fort King, summer, yes, yes. he was still around here. Yes. What, what became uh, uh, significant, and I, I could talk to you a good bit, but uh, the um, uh, General Jackson mm-hmm. appointed in 1833 an Indian agent to come here named... Uh, uh, Wiley Thompson. Yeah. Wiley had been a congressman for 12 years, was a Jacksonian in the Congress, and uh, in addition to that, he was also a major general over the entire state of Georgia's militia. And we think that there were a lot of soldiers back then, but actually uh, West Point had been started in about 1815, and this was our first, as a country, our first effort at a professional leadership as such. As far as the soldiers, there were limited numbers, and they were scattered all over the, the states that we had. Uh, so most of the soldiers were still in this time period militia 
or conscripts, Contra conscripts being those that they were hired to, to come in and be a, a soldier. So you had some professional soldiers, militia, which would only, much like our Guard and Reserve today, would come and stay for a short period of time and then go home. Uh, and then the conscripts that would say, hey, you pay me for such a kind of time. Yeah. Yes, mercenary. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, as they started to, um, uh, well, as they sent Wally Thompson here, he's trying to, uh, and he's kind of a hard-charging kind of guy, uh, he's trying to get all these chiefs to agree to go to Oklahoma. So uh, along in about 1835, he has a big powwow here, gets a lot of the chiefs together, and uh, tries to convince them. Osceola shows up. And uh, during the course of that, and, and we've got amazing recordings of some of the things that were actually spoken back and forth. Uh, Not recording, but written recordings. Written recordings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you get them from several different sources, mm -hmm. which we have, uh, it's, it's amazing the accuracy that came out of it. Uh, the folks in this day were really geared towards accuracy of things. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. There, there was a lot of tales that came along later on. But uh, when you get back to the actual recordings and stuff, it was phenomenal. So uh, he has this uh, um, powwow with the, uh, the chiefs. And in the course of that, Osceola steps up because some of the chiefs are wanting to, you know, kind of agree to this. And uh, that's when he basically walked over and took his knife and stuck it in the agreement and said that there was just no way, you know, that, that he was wanting the government to basically do what mm -hmm. they said they were going to do. They had a treaty for 30 years, mm -hmm. and that's what they expected. Well, Wally Thompson says uh, he's really upset about all this. So he uh, he tells Osceola, he says, why don't you come over to the fort in a few days and let's talk about this. So Osceola does. He thinks, well, maybe I've kind of convinced him uh, we can talk. And uh, he gets to the fort, and Wally Thompson immediately puts him in irons. Capture him. Yeah. Captures him, puts him in irons. Mm -hmm. Osceola's furious. Mm -hmm. But uh, as days and you know, weeks go by, he finds out he's not going to get out of irons until he befriends Wally Thompson. Mm -hmm. So he does that. He convinces him he's going to go and get the rest of the chiefs to sign and all this kind of stuff. So much so that when he walks out of the, the gate at the fort, Wally Thompson presents him with a new rifle. Hmm. And uh, so Osceola leaves, goes back, gets together with a lot of the other chiefs and so forth. Um, up through this same time period to send a strong message, uh, Amathala, who was kind of, had his, Amathala's town was kind of just northwest of Ocala, he had come down and he had uh, picked up his, uh, his goal for the cattle and the town and that kind of thing, was headed back to his village um, north of Ocala. Osceola personally, with a band of braves, met him and personally killed him and left him on the trail took his gold and spread it all around hmm. and uh, re recordings we've got have said that his body laid there for almost a year Wow! Uh, because he wanted the, the message to get out. Pretty serious statement. Yes. Yeah. So then what happens is uh, in December of 1835 on the 28th day of December about a day before that Osceola shows up out here at Fort King with a uh, band of, uh, of braves. They sit there for information we've gotten about a day, day and a half, waiting for Wiley Thompson to show himself. Uh, on that afternoon of the 28th, and we I just got some more accurate information about this uh, in, a, in a recording, um, between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 28th of December, he and Lieutenant Constantine came walking out of the fort after having dinner, afternoon dinner. And uh, when they did, 14 rounds hit Wiley Thompson right in the okay. chest. Wow. Uh, Constantine had two rounds in his chest. They also killed the settler, Erastus Rogers, and his young son, and one of his clerks, uh, scalped all of them, bludgeoned some of them, all except the, the young boy. And uh, they then left there and departed out to uh, an area about where Gore's Landing is on Okawaha River. And in the course of that, they celebrate what is accomplished. Um, because the very same afternoon that this was going on here at Fort King, a massacre occurred down in uh, uh, at, at the Dade Battlefield in Bushnell uh, on the trail. These were reinforcements coming to Fort King. Uh, they predominantly had been uh, soldiers that were either assigned or were leadership from West Point. 
Uh, I did a couple of tours uh, with the military police at West Point, and I was walking past one day and uh, down near the old original cemetery and saw this huge, huge monument. And I said, wow, that must be something important. So I had a short meeting to go to, and I come back and went over to the monument. And here's this, I'm literally saying something that's like three and a half feet high and probably about 35, 40 feet long, dedicated to the Dade Massacre in Florida. And I said, wow, that's strange. Because I didn't know at that time the relationship of what had gone on as far as them being West Pointers. So this, these, these were people who were going to come here? They came, yes. And they, the end is massacred them? Yes. They, oh. they came to that Tampa. That was connected then? Yes. They came. De- oh, definitely. Matter of fact, Osceola was supposed to be there, but hmm. Wally Thompson didn't come out of the fort uh-huh. until later that day. They thought he was. they were going to get him earlier. Yeah. Uh, so... They actually had Indian guides coming from Tampa, and when they get up to where the Dade Massacre occurred in in, uh, Bushnell, Mm -hmm. uh, this was kind of the last area. And the troops thought, uh, because there were other areas that they thought were good potential ambush points, Mm -hmm. that uh, that they were kind of safe. And so they were kind of slacking a little bit. They're on an open trail, kind of an open area with uh, palm, you know, uh, ground cover and that kind of thing, big pines. Well, needless to say, behind all those palmettos and stuff were where the Indians were at. Uh, 108 soldiers. Uh, the first volley, 54 of them are dead. Wow. Accurate shooters. Uh, they, the, 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 amazingly, when you uh, read about that, they say the first round, uh, if, the, if the Indians got a volley off, they were very accurate. Must have been. Let me Second, stop you right third. there because okay. we're going to be out of time. And I want to talk right. about your project. Okay. Uh, which, but again, anyway, that's fascinating stuff. We'll get on the Timaquans next time you come in. Sounds good. I can see we're going to have to have another one of these uh, <laughs> okay. down the road someplace. Yeah. Uh, and about what genius farmers they were and how they, how they fit in. Because a lot of people think the Seminoles were the first tribe here. Right, no. The Timaquans were Timaquans here. are here for yeah. thousands of years. Right. And uh, But let's get to the project of, of Fort King Historical yes. Preservation. Yes. And where you stand right now, what's being mm. done, what you're trying to get done, and how people can help. Well, what we're trying to do is uh, we want to preserve this. This is uh, this is our heritage as a community. Uh, it's our heritage as a state and a nation because it was American history that occurred right here in our midst. Uh, you know, to think uh, what took place and the significance it had in the history of America. Uh, it's really deep. It's rich. It's unbelievable in terms of, of the actual history that took place and the role that this played in American history. Uh, people like Zachary Taylor was a commander out here West Point. Really? Yeah, I mean at uh, Fort King. It was direct in the West Point uh, connection for sure. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, so what we have done is uh, over the last couple of years we've formed the Fort King Heritage Association and uh, it's a group of folks that are extremely uh, you know uh, committed to uh, make this a, a, a special place in our community. We want it to be a living history park we're fortunate that uh, the city and the county uh, own the property that we uh, we have currently, that uh, and they've been working with us to uh, uh, to get this uh, project to go forward. Uh, it's going to be a and is a public-private partnership. It's not just going to be a, another government thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want uh, there to be a, a private part to this, being that uh, we as citizens and businesses and so forth uh, need to make sure that we preserve this site. Um, we're getting started this year in, in really kind of doing some of the first initial things. We've got some folks right now that are volunteering that are helping us to create some trails out there. Right now the property is closed because uh, it is preserved and protected. Tell them uh, exactly where it is. Okay, it's, it's located on East Fort King Street. If, you, uh, if you're going out Fort King and you get to um, Southeast 36th Avenue, mm-hmm. it's actually about two blocks past that on the left. And you can see uh, a marker there. It sits up on a hill. This was, uh, uh, by all accounts, the second highest hill that we had in Marion County. Really? Yes. And um, the highest being the one out on Lemon Avenue. Yeah. And the Indians had right. that one. <laughs> <laughs> they knew where to get the best, best property. Yeah. Yes, uh, but uh, the fort set up on the hill there, and um, uh, needless to say, it was uh, amazing. We eventually, in about uh, four to five years, would like to be able to uh, recreate this fort mm. uh, to give a living history. Uh, just in the last uh, month, I've been able to come across... Uh, 
uh, the writings of Wiley Thompson. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. That covered two. He does some great research on two, this. Two, well, it's it's been um, it's, it's been, been a passion such, for you. I oh, know. and it's been such an interesting thing. I mean, I've been I, I could you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that I've stumbled on. Uh, oh, you should put it down. Uh, I mean, in, in you, terms you know, of, I was thinking about Hollywood and all the movies we've seen. We see tons of movies about other forts. Yes. Never Fort King. Except for one. Which one? Seminole. Really? If you look at the movie Seminole. I've seen that. It had uh, Rock Hudson and just a whole slew. It was uh, okay. put out in the 1950s. But you always uh, we've see got it a out copy in Kansas of it. and Oklahoma. Oh, I know. But you never see Fort King. I know. know. But when this movie starts, it shows a fort, and the the, the wording on it is Fort King. Yeah. Territory yeah. of Florida. Yeah. Headquarters, United States Army. Mm. Uh, well, times we've got all this type of stuff, but... Uh, the site has just kind of been sitting dormant. We're fortunate, though, because it is it is one of the most important uh, sites of yeah. all the forts that were in Florida, and that it's been preserved the way it has, yeah. uh, thanks to thanks people to McCall, through the years. By the way, especially well, most as, most McCall especially the Fall Senior, family, mm-hmm, yes, and his wife who purchased it. They acquired it and back before in, them. Others, I'm sure. Yes, we got to remember there were others before them. Yes, we forget about that sometimes. Yes. Yes, uh, and you're right. That's uh, people. Otherwise, it it would have been like so many other places in Florida that would have been developed and so forth. Yeah, and uh, it was a but, very desirable it was development preserved. property. Yes, because the Highlands being developed was the primary, and you got the planted land right here. Exactly, it would have been a development someplace. Exactly. Well, that's exactly. great. Well, that's great work by you and your group. And well, it it's been a great work by uh, a number of folks. Uh, Paul Nugent, that uh, was with the city, was very key about working on this over the years. Did a fabulous job. Of continuing to do it, uh, all the support that uh, that we had as a community from Cliff Stearns, who actually obtained this as a national historic landmark. So the location has the same designation as every historic landmark in America, like Gettysburg or mm-hmm. the Lincoln sure. Memorial, whatever. I mean, it it is a national landmark. It's on the uh, the the list. It's just that the National Park Service. Uh, didn't have the funding to make it right. into a national park. Otherwise, it would be. It's the 14 so Carriages Association, which yes. is an organization, yes. formed in 2011. Yes. Now, is there any kind of website or any kind of email? We, or? we, we are in the process I of uh, develop, mm-hmm. yes, developing that. So, and, uh, uh, any How about contact information for people who want to get involved? The uh, the best thing would be for them to probably contact me at this point. Okay. And, uh, Do you have an email address? Or? Uh, EagleBase at Embark Mail. Dot com. Well, one word, Eagle Base. At Eagle Base. Embark with a Q. Embark Mail. Embark Mail dot com. Dot and com. And Maury. It's just, yes. just sent to Maury. Uh, M O R E E Y. And uh, D E E N, not D A N. So, uh, uh, well, listen, thank you for doing this. I, I think you should write some, all this down, this narrative of. Well, we're. Even Wally we're, Thompson sounds like it'd be interesting. You know? Well, you know, as, as I kind of got into this in the last few years uh, started out just kind of becoming more familiar with the chronology mm-hmm. of time and stuff mm-hmm. but when you start getting into it all the people that were a key part in this the players and so forth that in itself is a fabulous yeah. history yeah. and uh, I've been doing a lot of research about Wiley Thompson because uh, there's just a lot that's not known about him yeah. I, I didn't and, know uh, about half what you said there and that's fascinating so you were asking about Osceola let me wrap up real quick yeah, with what happened seconds, there right? yeah Osceola got sick, and there's a whole background of that, too. He gets sick. He's over near the Platka area, and he, again, he wants to talk. He's trying to get them to listen to him and agree that the the original treaty was important and that they ought to to honor that. So one of the generals that was at Fort Marion at that time, it's now Fort Marion because the U.S. has taken over Florida. Before that, it was the Castile de San Marcos. Uh, on the Spanish uh, uh, rule. And uh, so anyway, this commander says, yeah, I'll meet with you. So Osceola comes with about six other chiefs and about 40 braves and um, meets just outside of St. Augustine under a white flag of truce. They immediately capture him and all the rest of them. Take him to the to the fort at St. Augustine, put him in uh, in the uh, jail there jail part there down in, uh, if you visited the site you, you know, can actually jail, see that. famous place yes well it was in the fort I mean oh, it was fort yes it was in the fort and uh, while he's there he gets continually more sick the doctor that's there uh, Dr. Whedon he uh, he takes care of him trying to nurture him along well in the process some of the other Indians that are there they 
uh, are getting sick too, and they're starving themselves, and managed to get through the bars and the windows mm -hmm. and get away about a dozen of them. Mm -hmm. They're afraid that they be in the army are afraid that Osceola may do the same thing. So they move him to Fort Moultrie in South Carolina. In the process, he asked if, um, if Dr. Whedon can go with him, and they agree. And amazingly, uh, Dr. Whedon turns out to be uh, the brother-in-law of Wesley, I mean, of Wiley Thompson. Really? Yes. And uh, some interesting things happened there. I won't tell you we'll all that today. We'll pick up on that next time. We'll get you back here in a few weeks. But he dies at Fort Moultrie, mm -hmm. and he was, you were talking about he was a well-respected. Right. He was so respected as a leader and standing up for what he stood for that when he was buried at Fort Moultrie, mm -hmm. he was buried with full military honors. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's something. Well, that's interesting. Fascinating stuff, Mari. Amazing. Thanks for joining us. I love it. We've got keep a rich in, heritage here in Ocala and Marion County and a lot to be proud of. Keep preserving it. Some of it just hasn't been told, and uh, we need to bring it forward. Well, you just did. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Mark Dean. Thank you, buddy. Great to Coming be here. Coming up next, we've got Dr. Buddy and uh, also got uh, Tweets and Quotes. Stay tuned to the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, the source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joel, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. Cookies, 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 cookies. Wait, when you cookies, want something cookies, special cookies. and fun for any occasion, get cookies. That's right. The Great American Cookie Company in the Paddock Mall Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. You might notice that I said fun and delicious more than once. That's because I can't say it enough. The next time you're at the mall, be sure and stop by or call 352-237-2557 to place your order. Cookies, cookies, Yum. cookies, cookies. We go cookie-eating cookies. The Great American Cookie Company. What you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Portion sizes have steadily increased over the past 20 years. During the same time period, obesity rates have doubled for adults and tripled for children. Modern technology distracts us more and more from the real world around us. The danger of being present but absent is that people lose touch with their emotions and have weaker social bonds. Adult professionals were least likely to want to hire people who use the word like excessively and incorrectly. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. 
Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. All right, back to the program. Uh, tee it up, JJ. Let's go, Doctor Buddy. Doctor Buddy session today. I'm going to uh, just warn you that this is an article out of Shape Magazine. Five things men wish women knew. Now, guys, don't listen up. These are other guys saying they wish women knew, and we'll get your reaction to each one. For short, sure. number one, you're more powerful than you think. And Alex McGregor, 19 years old, says, In that single moment when you glance in our direction, we lock our eyes and all we feel is our heart beating through your chest. You have us. True or false, guys? Yeah, it was 19 years old. So, let me just say this. She doesn't really know. Puppy love. It's puppy love. Is that a he or a she? It's a a he. This is is what they wish women knew. We got all age groups here, okay? 19 years old. What does he know? Okay? I mean, come on. Up or down, guys? Uh, I, don't, I don't think he knows what he's talking we're down. All right, here's one from someone named Lalo Fuentes, who's a celebrity trainer. Hang on now. We like shopping with you sometimes. Things I wish women knew, if you trim your hair, don't get upset if we don't notice. Agree to that, don't you guys? I agree to that 100%. You know, look, now, look at me, I, honey. What's different? I don't know. I agree I, with the uh, shopping thing, yeah, too. Every yeah. now and then, I like to be a part of what she picks out the way. Yeah, all right. I, I, I go shopping occasionally. In fact, I used to go early on in my life. I would actually go and help my wife. I'd pay, help her, actually, sometimes pick out her toys. Yeah. So, I don't do that. I'm okay JJ, you that. have to have taste, my friend. Um, I so, just don't like the whole process. It's but, yeah, annoying. if you only get the split ends cut off your hair, don't yeah. expect me to notice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean? <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I had a mustache and, sh- and, and shaved it. My wife didn't notice for two months. If you right? change your hair color from caramel to light caramel, don't yeah. expect me to notice. No, if you go if you go from, <laughs> from blonde to red, we might notice. We might so notice. Give us a hand. Okay, we're not so different. So, at the gym, men are just as self-conscious and check themselves out in the mirror as much as women do. Tom, you in the gym yes. a lot. True, right? Yeah. Real vain. All right. In regards to cooking, men can do more than barbecue. True or false? Either True. Either. True. I, I agree with that. I could cook a lot. I can things. cook a lot. JJ, you can't cook anything. I'm so. good at barbecue. Yeah, that's all, though. So, all right. Um, and finally... You're beautiful when you don't try so hard. Yes. Thomas Edwards, 26, JJ, a little older than you. I wish women knew, even though we appreciate you taking hours to get dressed and put on your face, it's no longer necessary. Wrong. I want my woman to be dressed up and looking good and have a painted face. <laughs> well, no, but, that, no, but, no, but there, are some, <laughs> there are some girls, buddy. I like your style, buddy. There are some girls that... When I'm going out. While the, makeup, out. While the makeup is... An enhancement. There are some girls that are just naturally beautiful, and they don't always need to be dolled up True. to look good. Thomas Savers, 26, says superficial beauty catches our attention, but natural beauty keeps it, okay? And one more. When it comes to gift giving, I wish women knew that we are about as clueless as a five-year-old boy doing quantum physics. Drop some hints to us and avoid the disappointing gifts. Give us a hint. I agree with that one. Yes. All right? A little something and wind up with this tweet from Wayne's World. You'll, this is your kind of thing, JJ. Listen, Wayne's World. Let me tell you something about women. They want you to come get them. They love it. Of course. Wayne's World. 
Agree with that? Uh, yeah. All right. All right, just a mediocre ad, Dr. Buddy, today. Couldn't find a good material. Tom, you got a good one, which we'll share tomorrow. I had a good one tomorrow. The well, seven we'll... tweets that you or your Tex. significant other, seven tick texts yeah. that you or your significant other probably shouldn't send each other in the first nine months of a relationship. Yeah, it's like Brendan and his invention where you put a, 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 a drunkometer on your cell phone when you call your ex girlfriend, it cuts off. Yeah. Sort of the exactly. same thing. I think that'd be a great invention. Yeah, with you. I, hey, I, JJ could already use that one for sure. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back, wrap it up with our uh, tweets, tweets and, quotes. and quotes next right here in the Voice Book Out. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com, the source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little bit of something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have uh, state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. Course bank approval. Vehicle purchase across the fixed rate allowance offers no combined. Are you bored, tired, and disgusted with your old car? Hey, this is Cupid, Chris Spears from Prestige Auto Sales. I want you to love your car, so trade in the old car you hate. Even if you're still making payments. Even if you owe more than it's worth. And I'll help you drive a nicer, newer car sooner than you ever thought possible. Plus, when you use your tax refund as a down payment, you'll get a lot nicer, newer car. So you can hook up with a car you love today. Bad credit? Cupid got you down? Our For The People Credit Approval Specialists are world-class matchmakers. They'll connect you with the lender most likely to approve your loan. Hate your old car? Dump it. And fall in love with a nicer, newer car today, even if you have more than it's worth or are still making payments. Plus, turn your tax refund into your down payment and save a lot on a car you'll love. Hurry, this love fest ends when we match 57 people with a car of their dreams. I'm Chris Spears, and I'm a dealer for the people. Visit me in Ocala or Bellevue. Online at PrestigeSaysYes.com. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. Digital Graphics Reborn, Phoenix Promotional Solutions. When you need vehicle wraps, banners, t-shirts, window graphics, you need to call Phoenix Promotional Solutions at 368-2404. 368-2404. When you need building signs, vehicle wraps, yard signs, realty signs, business cards, you need to call 368-2404. 368-2404. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, Digital Graphics Reborn. Reborn. Life's journey has many ups and downs, but you can take comfort in the knowledge that Robert's Funeral Home is here to serve you and your family with loving care and dignity. The Roberts family has been providing their caring services since 1898 and offer traditional, custom, cremation, and veteran services. Pre-made arrangements are also available. Roberts Funeral Homes, great funeral homes serve great people. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar in impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. That's the thing about women is that I want to say this, that women 
they say they want us to do things for them. But then when we do it sometime, they tell us we do it all wrong. That's their job. No, whatever it is, they say, would you do it? Okay, fine. Well, you didn't do it right. Well, I'm saying if you want to do it right, do it yourself. If you want me to do it right, you know, let me do it right. It's just one of those things that some people have difficulty communicating. All right, time for tweets and quotes. Tweet, 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 tweet. You know this guy I know, uh, Tom. Richard Lewis. Of course. Funny and neurotic comedian. Yes, he is. Uh, don't see much of him anymore, do we? No. By the way, I saw a special on the Borscht Belt on CBS Sunday, Sunday morning, back at the Catskills day. Richard Lewis says, I deeply apologize to Richard Lewis for my offensive slurs to myself. <laughs> Another Einstein. Einstein's always in everybody's quote book. The important thing is not to stop questioning. I agree with that. you got to keep questioning. And this is so true for everybody. If you're in a relationship or if you're a talk show host, just a person. Author unknown. Even a fish would not get into trouble if he kept his mouth shut. <laughs> Oh. You know, sometimes you get those. That's one of those, like, it's better to be thought an idiot than open your mouth and, and remove prove, all doubt. And, and Mark, Mark Twain. That's a Mark Twain yeah, joke, right? Exactly. And, you know, you know those things you say sometimes, you just wish you could grab them and put them back in your mouth, and you say, give them. Not know? sometimes. Yeah. It's, I uh, already, a lot. Already out there, you think, what was I think? It's like that. It's like sending texts, the wrong texts. You, you know how uh, we get Tim Ryan's always on the show? Yeah. Basketball coach. I'm going to get him yeah. on again, by the way. Well, Marty Smith is the head baseball coach at CF. Yeah, yes. Marty just tweeted, into the bottom of the six, CF leads seven to two. So, see, there you go. Mm-hmm. Marty Smith in the dugout Tweet. tweeting. What did we do before we had Twitter? Very little, it would seem. Or <laughs> Facebook. Or email. Or cell phones. We lived a very mundane life. I don't know about that. <clears throat> Think about how easy I'm so your job over Facebook. Been. I mean, I'm so over that thing. That's so, that's that to me is like a 1950s toy. Think of how easy your job, easier your job would have been if you'd have had just one th- one item, email. How well, much? E- how yeah. much easier that would have been on you sending stories back and forth and stuff like that. Well, think about this: if you work at a paper and you get 20 letters one week, you got to answer them all, type them all, right, and correct them all. Or you can just reply to emails. That's right. It does make it much easier. No question about it. That's good and it's bad. Sometimes when you're taking your time, you think about it a little bit more. You're not not apt to write an angry letter and send it off. But my understanding is, as a column writer, you had a deadline daily. You you weren't flush with time all the time. Well, you you, you learn to work on deadline every day. Not not, Not just column writers. Beat reporters. You put you push that little button and then you hope that story story is gone, and it's it's always like it's always pressure. Unless always. you're unless you're Rick <clears throat> Riley, and then you <clears throat> then you better not better not come up with a bad headline, and you uh, have to go redo it all. Rick Riley, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty. a good. You have to tell that story one day on the yeah, air. That was a great tell, story. We'll tell it again sometime. Coming up next hour, one of my one of our favorites, the old ball coach. He's you know he's well. he's a guy that makes it fun. Need to be more cats who make it fun out there, you know. Really, he just, has a good time, and and you, and you have a good time when you're around him. That's the thing, is that, and I don't mean necessarily as a media person, but you're fans gonna, and you're going to ask him about his golf game, probably. By okay, the way, good, good. Speaking of him and our friends at Florida, my good friend Norm Carlson, yep, retired associate athletic director, going into the knife tomorrow. Have knee replacements surgery tomorrow at Shands. Good Ooh. luck, Normie. Hope it all goes well. He's going to have a titanium hip. I said we could be titanium twins. I got no, a titanium Me. knee. I got the titanium hip. Well, we can set us off some alarms in airports. All right, stay tuned. Coming up next right here on the program, lots to go on the Buddy Sports page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Up in the Indiana town, had a good looking mom. With them Indiana boys on an Indiana night. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? 
Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Relations got you down. Are you at your wit's end? Does the opposite sex just confuse you? Then I've got the solution for you, Dr. Buddy. Well, let me just tell you what you slugs are doing wrong. Remember, dummy, it's about the chase and the romantic interludes, okay? Now, here's the difference. Instead of dinner and a movie, which seems obsolete these days, uh, they have these, these random phone texts, Facebook posts, instant message, and quote-unquote non-dates. Traditional courtship, which is still what women want, guys. Picking up a telephone, asking someone on a date, maybe even going as far to pick them up in your car, mm-hmm. requires courage, strategic planning, and a considerable investment in ego. So now you know where to tune in to get all your relationship advice. It's the Dr. Buddy Show every Monday at Voice of Ocala. You can succeed only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veterans. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem, and you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome, and they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have got unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320, and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. Why is everyone so obsessed with virtual reality and high definition? My neighbor came over yesterday to show me the photographs he took of the pansies and dianthus that I got from Kenny's Place Nursery. He had this electronic pad, and with the flip of his finger, he showed me these beautiful shots he took in my garden. Then he said, you can almost smell them. That's when I used my finger and motioned him to the garden, and then pointing with my cursor, also known as my finger, I pointed toward the real flowers from Kenny's Place Nursery, and I said, I can smell them. Instead of virtual reality, I enjoy real reality. But it is more than the beauty of the pansies and dianthus and more than their fragrance. It's the way they move in the breeze. It's the butterflies and bees that are attracted to them. You know, the plants I get from Kenny's Place Nursery from my garden in the real world provide me with an outdoor sanctuary to escape from that virtual world. Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. Kenny's Place Nursery, where the plants, the people, and the mission are all beautiful. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics.
official says the cause of the engine room fire that disabled the Carnival cruise ship Triumph was a leaky fuel line. The fire left the ship dead in the water, and passengers say they had few working bathrooms and little to eat as the ship was towed to port in Alabama over five days. A former boyfriend and father to her oldest boy says Mindy McCready threatened to kill herself after losing custody of her sons earlier this month. Yet she was allowed to leave a court-ordered drug rehab program days before she took her own life at her home in Heber Springs, Arkansas. Michelle Obama jokingly tells Rachel Ray, a midlife crisis is what inspired her new haircut with bangs. A former Hollywood animal trainer who trained Flipper and Lassie later devoted her life to protecting performing animals after seeing widespread abuse in the entertainment industry has died at the age of 69. That was Pat Derby. This is ABC News. How do you keep an older car running like new? Just ask a Ford customer. How are you? Jackie, tell me why somebody should bring their car here to the Ford dealership for service instead of those other places. They have wonderful service. I come and make sure I get my oil changed, and when they tell you your tires need to be rotated, you got to get that done as well. Stop by for Motocraft Brake Service today and get a $40 mail-in rebate. Rebate by check. Motocraft brake pads on most cars and light trucks. One axle. Excludes parking brakes and machining rotors or drums. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details through 331.13. Mom, I had the best dream. <laughs> well, good morning to you, too. Okay, so I was a knight. I had a sword, and our house was a castle. There was this angry dragon. It was kind of scary. Oh, yeah? But I protected the castle. Oh, that's my brave little man. I'm glad our castle is safe. Your home is your castle, and sometimes you need help defending it. The National Association of Realtors supports maintaining homeowner tax incentives because they make home ownership more affordable for more families. Learn more at houselogic.com. How much time? 30. 30 seconds. I'm on right now. I don't believe you. Okay, okay. Enough kidding around. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. And now it's time for the Buddy Martin Buddy Sports Bay. He actually had me stay here last night in his gym. It's like I don't fit in. It's like I don't belong here. Let's go talk to a couple of guys that never gamble. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. See, Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the poor house at the same time. He didn't think we could do it. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slice. And now, here's Buddy. Hey, welcome to Buddy Sports Bay. It's on a Monday. Coming up, 5.30, Steve Spurrier, 5.50, France Beer, talking about tomorrow night's Florida-Missouri game. And, guys, most of the news today nationally centers around Dr. Jerry Buss, who not only competed hard, but came up hard. I did not know the extent of his poverty until I read this fine story on Yahoo!, by Steve Springer. And he died at 80 years old. Magic Johnson stays like my dad. And arguably he is, not if not, the number one owner in all sports, one of the top three of all time, maybe. He he brought us Showtime. He brought us Magic, even though Jack Kent Cook actually bought the team, sold the team, excuse me, and drafted Magic. It was Jerry Buss's idea for Showtime, which transformed not just the Lakers, but, J.J., important lesson for you, all of the NBA. The NBA was in deep trouble in the late 70s. The drugs had started becoming public knowledge. The league was in trouble. Franchises were in trouble. People didn't go to the ballpark. The games were decided really at the end of the game. It was an old standard joke. You can go watch the last two minutes to find out what happens. Dr. Jerry Buss came into it. He brought in cheerleaders because he was a USC fan. He transformed the recreational thing into a showbiz experience. He actually tried to buy up as many of the seats on the floor as he could because he wanted to get the dignitaries and all his friends and lawyers together. He had 50 lawyers on that deal when he, when he bought the, the forum and he bought the Lakers and all that stuff. A huge deal. Anyway, 
There are many good stories out there about it. You'll be hearing a lot about it. Dr. Jerry Buss, 80 years old, died today. And none better than I read than from a guy named Steve Springer from Yahoo. You can log on to Yahoo and just go look for Dr. Jerry Buss, and you'll see this piece. And to think that this guy was living in Wyoming when he was like five or six years old, remembers standing in bread line with his mother right after the Depression, not knowing if he was going to have food to eat. He, he spent, he saved his money. He, by the way, he got his degree in economics, became a chemical a doctor of chemistry, went to graduate Wyoming, went to USC, whatever. And he wound up saving $1,000 and invested that money and became a multi-millionaire fund. Anyway, Dr. Jerry Buss, dead at 80. And the amazing thing was to buy the forum, to buy the L.A. forum or the Staples Center now, but the forum and to pay for the Lakers and everything, and the total investment, I think, somewhere came up to, for everything. Parking lots and everything came up to like $67 million, and Forbes just said the team was worth $1 billion. Yeah. I'd say that he made a pretty good investment say every so. time he invested his I'd money. Say. And he gave Magic Johnson a 25-year deal for $25 million. People thought he was lost his mind. Mm-hmm. Crazy, man. Anyway, that's a lot to talk about there. But what a RIP to this guy. He was he transformed the whole league. He really he and a few others really changed things and saved the NBA. But there's lots of other news out there right now. Yes. And, J.J., I just got a text from Todd Swearing and said, I'm in Danica Tona. What are you talking about? I was there? just about to say, Danica Patrick won the poll for the Daytona 500. She averaged 196, 196.43 miles per hour, and she is obviously the first female to ever do that. Now, how significant, guys, is that? Well, you got to win it, I think. She hasn't the, won anything the yet. The poll's a big step. But, but uh, winning the poll... Most people don't win from pole. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Last person to win from the pole was Dale Jarrett, 2000. See, a long time. <laughs> AP poll came out today in basketball. Miami, who survived a scare last night. You got a little nervous there about your, uh, yeah, your I did. Clemson team. Uh, you they, had the, 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 the Salva you know, household feud tough, there. Those tough uh, road games in the ACC. They ended up pulling it off 45-43 in a very ugly game. But they moved up because uh, Duke lost. Beat. Duke got beat by Virginia. Or who did Duke get beat by? Uh, who did they get Duke beat Duke got by? beat by Maryland. Maryland, yes, correct. And All Indiana, the Terp fans out there are just, just right. really. Indiana in the last, is the number one spot, and Florida is five. And so that's the last time spots. Maryland and Duke will face each other as ACC opponents. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So Miami goes to two, and guess who's five? The Gators. Behind Gonzaga and Michigan State. Although, in the thing that really counts, the mock bracketologies that are out, Gonzaga is a two seed. Indiana, Florida, Michigan State, and Miami are all one seeds. Yeah, that's true. They got that's Florida really bad. They got right now. They got Florida number one in the West, but Florida has a big game tomorrow night. Missouri, Missouri at Missouri. At Missouri, different Missouri's team. Not a good team. Different team. Oh, but JJ at home, they're very they're a different good. team. They got their players back now. You look at them, you see they're a lot better team than everybody. Th- and you they think they just lost, but they're still they're still a better to Arkansas. They, they trounced. They trounced, Florida trounced them last time, but they're much better now with the guys that got Speaking back. Speaking of a headline that we did, that nobody well, talked about. Really good. We're not talking about this headline. Kentucky beaten by 30 by Tennessee. Yeah. Well, what you knew that was going to happen. New Orleans is out. I, I, I didn't know that you was You didn't know they were going to beat them by 30. They're going to get beat. They're, well, they're not going to the tournament if they keep Well, they have, if they could knock Florida off still, you know. No way. Absolutely not. What they said about Arkansas, too. This team looks like they folded up, man. Yeah. Well, all right. One also, more. last headline was uh, NBA All Star Game was yesterday. If was a joke. Watched, didn't I watch. didn't watch. Didn't but, even uh, watch it. Never turned it on. The wet, me neither. West won one forty three to one thirty eight, and Chris Paul had twenty points, fifteen assists, and an elbow from Joe MVP. Kim Noah in the face. Why don't we care? Oh, there was an elbow thrown in the game. Joe Kim Noah threw an elbow to Chris Paul in his face as he was running down court, nailed him right in the face. Why don't we care about it? Because the NBA, if you go to the NBA All Star Game, it's fun to watch. Yeah, but it's fun. But it just it's the so uncompetitive. Yes, it's more like you know, let's let's show off all the slam dunks we can do. That's why the baseball game's pretty legit because 
it's the pitchers are always going to be competitors, competitive against the hitters and vice versa. Yeah. You know, in football, they don't want to hurt each other. Basketball, they don't want to play defense. It's, they want to throw it off the backboard and make a huge dunk and talk to the rappers sitting courtside. And it's just a totally different vibe. Yeah. Other local news, uh, we'll tell you about Ted Potter. Uh, Alex Carrasco got his first start at Florida AMM up at Troy. We'll tell you about that. Um, and uh, coming up at 5.30 again, Steve Spurrier joins us. We'll ask him about uh, the contract he signed in December. So it looks like he's going to be coaching for a while. All coming your way right here on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar in Impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports, from NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. If you want to avoid getting ripped off and put more money in your pocket, then join me, Clark Howard, every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA, The Source. Hi, Brittany here from Mike Scott Plumbing. We're well into the new year, the world didn't end, and now you have all those new year resolutions you haven't even started on. So here's an idea. Take the money you are going to waste on those late night infomercials for some weight loss gadget that doesn't even work and do something that will work. Like a new bathtub or that new kitchen sink you've had your eye on. Not only will it look good, but it would add value to your home. Did you know that Mike Scott Plumbing has a brand new showroom just across from the new Brownwood Square? In addition to the main showroom in Hernando? So wherever you are, it's just a short drive away. Let our showroom specialists get you one step closer to the kitchen and bath of your dreams. Call us today, 237-2888. That's 237-2888. And check us out on the web, mikescottplumbing.com. And remember, if water runs through it, we do it. Mike Scott Plumbing. You make promises in life when you get married, have kids, buy a home. You make promises to take care of the ones you love. Auto Owners Insurance promises great service, and we delivered again. J.D. Power & Associates ranked Auto Owners Insurance highest in customer satisfaction with auto insurance claims three years in a row. Auto Owners, promises made, promises kept. For award information, visit jdpower.com. Visit George Mangan Insurance, 725 Northeast 25th Avenue, Ocala, where the customers do come first. Hello? 
Can you hear me? Because if you can, then so can your customers. Radio works. Call today to advertise your business right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. Keeping you in touch with Ocala. WOCA. Pidge is in kind of like a funky mood today. He's got that funky music going on. You know, Dr. Buddy does. It's a good song. Um, All right, let me tell you about this little incident that happened up in Tennessee in Memphis, okay? Now, if you see the Buckeye, Tom, for those people who happen to be watching on our WOC.com on or streaming live. Uh, if you look real close inside of that box, you'll see an Ohio State Buckeye on the bobblehead of Urban. By the way, JJ, I'm still waiting for the Will Chamberlain. <clears throat> uh, and uh, Dr. J. Oh, Dr. J. Dr. J. That's who's going to be. I love Dr. J. I saw him on last night. Bring him in. Let's have him. I actually knew Dr. J. Met him, talked to him, walked him down the street in New York. Uh, anyway, here's the deal. This couple from Columbus, driving through Memphis. They get pulled over to the side, and the Tennessee police say, uh, want to know more about what's going on with your bumper sticker. <laughs> what's, what do you mean, what's going on with bumper sticker? Well, you got something on your bumper sticker that's a marijuana leaf. I said, what? I said, that's a marijuana leaf. They said, no, it's not. I said, what is it? It's a Buckeye. It's an Ohio Buckeye. And the guy said, well, you can take that off right now if you want to travel to our <laughs> town. So the guy said, okay. And he just kind of just bugged well, us down the highway. No. Well, but he said, okay, and took off and left. But, you know, the cops in Tennessee thinking that the Buckeye, why would they think they saw a helmet with about a thousand Even of those on Even if they there? did think... That it was a marijuana. Isn't that freedom sticker? of expression? Yeah, you of course. Can't just pull somebody over for that. You could have a head, you could have a bumper sticker that shoot the president. As bad as it is, it's a free country. Although it's the First Amendment. Although I did get pulled over in Georgia one time. You probably deserve and the it. Co- no, the cop said I, I asked him because, you know, just because they wanted to. I said, "What the hell did you pull us over for?" He said, "What do you mean? It's t- five guys." that are all under the age of 25, and it looks like y'all might be partying. So I was making sure there was no open alcohol in the car or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, there was probable cause because you've seen five young gentlemen in the car to pull us over. He said, boy, this is my town. You don't ask me what I'm doing. Well, I do because I want to. So he searched just everything, took our IDs, and then we went to jail. And I'll tell you why. Because you opened your mouth. Because he asked if we had yeah. one question. You told us this story. You opened oh, your yeah, mouth. I did. What I say earlier, even a fish opens his mouth sometimes. Well, there you go. I asked Barney if I could see his bullet, and we all yeah, went to jail. There you go. <laughs> By the way, JJ, I got good news for you. Breaking news here for you. Remember the Miami it. case? Yeah, the investigation. Yeah, I, know. I saw it. There's absolutely not no breaking news with this. They're basically saying it's going to be going on like normal. JJ. They fired their head of their the vice president of enforcement. I just got it right in front of me. Yeah, I know. But they fired their top guy. Or the NCAA just broke. Yeah, I know. But the investigation on Miami is still going uh, to go on. Well, what plan. did you think it was going to do? Nothing. Okay. But it means nothing. Well, to no, but they're going to have to start Miami. over again, though, because the head of the investigating thing is. I don't been know fired. if they're going to have to start. Well, all the Emmert way over said again, it's but a, a debacle. Yep. And um, this guy, Ju- this woman, Julie Rowe Lash, right. remember? She was the one who was causing all havoc right. down there. She'd been fired. Um, apparently, she approved an improper financial relationship. Right. Between, uh, Everything yeah. that she touched right. is now tainted. So they're right. going to have to start all over again. Yeah. It'll be another. I think it may be. Uh, it's by little time, JJ. Miami may time. Miami may self-impose bans for the next ten That's years. What I was now. about to say, well, what's so great about that? So they can sit out another bowl game on how their you, own. JJ, how would you like to have a basketball team on probation about right now? Huh? I don't think it is going to get that serious with the but, basketball program. Well, I mean, you never know. With the there start was one open player door. involved. Yeah. In basketball or something. Yeah, like that. Well, well Shalala will just keep telling them to give give you another another bowl band, another bowl band. Basketball another bowl will band. be so on legit right now. Well, you are you know, you never number know. two in the nation. Hey, look. Well, they're not number two in the nation. Just a bunch of old guys that don't know a whole lot about basketball say they're number two in the nation. 
Okay. Where is North Carolina, by the way? Are they listening? They're horrible. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Tom's team is not listening anywhere. They're okay. horrible. Just checking. Just checking. Hey, what's this story about Josh Hamilton ripping on Dallas Fort Worth? He's saying if they boo him, they're not good fans. So that's not a, not a true they? baseball city. It's not okay, a true baseball city. Okay, is Anaheim? You know, I don't know what a true baseball city Anaheim, is anymore. Anaheim's uh, more of a baseball city than Dallas Fort Worth. Let me ask you this: In Anaheim, Angels, the Angels are Anaheim. The people will come out just for the Angels. In Dallas, Fort Worth, the Rangers ain't the draw. The Rangers always have a lot of people. Well, the last five or six but years. Cowboys. That's only because they have yeah. something. They're just finding something to do until the star takes the field again. But they they have pretty good basketball too, and you know whatever. But here's the deal: Anaheim, you want to talk about baseball towns, the Angels. You want to talk about baseball towns? There's only only about five or six. Okay, yeah, St. I mean, Louis is about Boston. Wait a minute, let me Boston, New York, Cincinnati, St. Louis. There's four right there. Right, right there. Those yeah, those are kind of hard to beat, and you can go from there. Chicago, Chicago is not that great a baseball town. The Cubs are a novelty item. You know, I guess you could put Chicago on as number five, right? But n- there's no way. You know, it's really a baseball town, and people don't give it credit for being a baseball town. It's Seattle, Washington. Certainly not Atlanta. It, Seattle, no, used to, no. Seattle used to draw terrible out there. Yeah, but they don't. They, they, Seattle don't still know. draws it's, terrible. It's terrible. a huge baseball terrible. town. Terrible. Yeah, the Dodgers, Atlanta's, look, the, LA, the Dodgers draw, have drawn great over the years. I mean, Atlanta's a terrible. It's not a great baseball it, town. Atlanta's a terrible baseball. Yeah, of course town. they should have moved the race thirty years ago. Atl- um, Atlanta's a, yeah Miami Atl- yeah Tampa and Miami's Miami. awful. Yeah. Those may be the two of course, worst baseball towns awful. in America. What about San Fran? You know, it's become a good baseball yeah. town. It really has. I mean, the last 25, 30 years. But, you know, we don't remember JJ. Buddy does, but we don't remember. The epicenter of baseball used to be the five boroughs of New York. The of Yankees, course. the Giants, and the Dodgers well, were still all really there. Is, you massive. know what they argued about, don't you? You know who the teams were there? You know this, JJ, so you know? The Dodgers, yeah, the Dodgers were in Brooklyn. The, the Giants. No, no, no. Or no Mets. The no Mets. Giants were in Polo Grounds. The Yankees, Yankee Stadium. And they argued every day about who was the best center fielder. You had Ebbets Field, Willie the Polo Mays, Grounds, and the Yankee Stadium. Duke Schneider or Mickey Mantle. All the time in the 50s. That was the argument yeah. going on. Three teams in one city. How about that? All, within within bur- th- three of the five boroughs. And the th- thing was... My dad went to a baseball game at Ebbets Field. He said it was one of the best baseball parks he ever went to. It was a little band box. I, right. I told you guys this story, and I won't waste the time. I've got to go to break. But when I went to Brooklyn the first time, I never went to a baseball or a sporting event. They played football games in that stadium for right. a while, back in the old Continental League or something. But I went there for Gil Hodges' funeral. Gil Hodges was a manager. Right. Remember the great Dodger teams in the 50s? He died of a heart attack as a manager. And I was living in New York. I went to Brooklyn to, 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 the, to the funeral. And it was such an incredible experience. There was a iron gates around the cemetery in the middle of Isle Prospect Avenue there in Brooklyn. And I remember going out there, and I saw these limos pull up. And Brooklyn at that time was really not a great place to be. It's become quite a little little, uh, little town now, not a little town, big town. It's revived. But out of these limos came the gods of baseball. All the great Mets players, all the great players like, you know, Seaver and and all those people in 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 in, in, in May. I like how you said that. All the great, all the great Mets players. Seaver. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there have been a few. You know, they did win a, a World Series, you know, too. You know, sixty nine, the bumbling you know, Mets. You don't forget about Nolan Ryan being there, and they had a pretty good staff. Yeah, those Jerry days. Kuzman, he's on the rookie card. And, and, and anyway, so the bottom line is, these guys who were old Dodgers, L.A. Dodgers, and now Dodgers, came back to honor Gil Hodges, and I began to realize at that moment, I could see what that baseball team meant to that city because there were people up in the brownstones, women with curlers, curlers on their hair, looking out the window like a cartoon you used to see as a kid, right. uh, looking at the and people pushing baby strollers by, all gawking in to see this thing. Because they were looking at all these great these baseball players that were had you know come Who to the, pay homage. O'Malley had taken away from them. Well, certainly. They'll never forget that. Anyway, uh, Dodgers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Coming up in five minutes, Steve Spurrier joins us. We'll talk to him about uh, SEC football. JJ, you should be happy today, and you're not. Your team is doing well. I am happy. You know, no, you're not happy. You're about as happy. On a scale of one to ten, how happy is JJ? A two? Huh? I was going to say, I was going to give him a I'm negative. I'm not feeling sad. I was going to give him a negative energy. Is it possible? About a minus three. Minus, minus three? Four. That hurts, man. That's pretty low. 
right. Anyway, any more headlines before I go to break, JJ? Is that it today? Uh, Mac Barkley will not be thrown at the NFL Combine. Mm-hmm. Who cares, by yeah. the way? Uh, and we'll talk about a bust. Do you really think he's going to be a bust? I don't, I don't know. think he's going to be drafted that high to begin with. Oh, he's not. I think if he goes in the third round, it's too early. Third? You're crazy. <laughs> he's going to be drafted in the top ten, probably. Which is ridiculous. I don't well, think so. I mean, they see all these quarterbacks. Uh, I don't think so. That get Pretty drafted sure. early and do well. I don't well. think so. Barkley. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Geno Smith, Mac, Mike Lennon, and uh, Tyler Wilson are all up there. Yeah. Well, Tyler Wilson, of course. Geno Smith, I'm still not a believer, but we'll see. I'm not a believer in any of these guys. Oh. Yeah, not a, not a banner year for quarterbacks. All right, speaking of the banner years, Coach Spurrier will join us next right here on The Voice of Ocala. Stay tuned to... 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have uh, state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Senior's Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Hi, Brittany here from Mike Scott Plumbing. We're well into the new year, the world didn't end, and now you have all those new year resolutions you haven't even started on. So here's an idea. Take the money you are going to waste on those late night infomercials for some weight loss gadget that doesn't even work. And do something that will work. Like a new bathtub or that new kitchen sink you've had your eye on. Not only will it look good, but it would add value to your home. Did you know that Mike Scott Plumbing has a brand new showroom just across from the new Brownwood Square? In addition to the main showroom in Hernando? So wherever you are, it's just a short drive away. Let our showroom specialists get you one step closer to the kitchen and bath of your dreams. Call us today, 237-2888. That's 237-2888. And check us out on the web, mikescottplumbing.com. And remember, if water runs through it, we do it. Mike Scott Plumbing. 
Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. I left my home in Georgia Headed for the Frisco Bay Cause I've had Coming back momentarily here with Coach Spurrier. Uh, Tom, you got an interesting stat about teams that won the national championship that in didn't basketball. make it back. Yeah, they didn't make it back to the bat, NCAA basketball. Well, it wouldn't be a football tournament. Since the tourney expansion to 64 teams, four reigning NCAA champions have missed the big dance. According to Joe Lenardi, Kentucky is now out of his bracket. The four teams that have missed the big dance after winning the net, winning it all, cutting down the nets a year well, we before. We know Florida was one, so who else were the other ones? In 2010, North Carolina. 2008, the University of Florida. 1989, Kansas. And 1987, Louisville. Yeah, so cool. So, looks like Kentucky may be the fifth team. Could be. On their way if the Wildcats don't get better. Let's go to our hotline right now. Welcome in the head football coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks, my friend Steve Spurrier. Coach, how you doing? Hey, is this Buddy? This is Buddy. Buddy Martin, one of my good buddies from Florida. Yeah, <laughs> good to talk to you again. Good talking to you, Steve, and always fun to catch up with you. And, and uh, you know, uh, do you you you, uh, you have sort of built a reputation as a guy and who who makes it fun for the media guys. Do you still have fun with these guys, or is it to a point where we're so politically correct anymore you can't do that? Fun with the media guys? Yeah, you always like to play prank, pranks on them. No, like what? Oh, uh, come on now, the I, handcuff thing I'm you probably did. a little looser. I'm probably a little looser around the media than uh, yeah. most ball coaches, I guess. But... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm a prankster. No, I don't do that. What about the handcuffs, Coach? The handcuffs. Yeah, when you had the years ago. Yeah, when you had the. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> the show. Uh, actually, uh, Jadavion Clowney was in town, and he was just in a bar downtown, and there was a robbery, and somebody said it was a tall dude with dreadlocks, and they came in there and handcuffed Jadavion. Mm-hmm. And then ask him a bunch of questions and, and then let him go. So, of course, everybody said he got arrested and this, that, and the other. And I said, no, I, he just got handcuffed. So, so we had it, yeah, we staged it out on the practice field after uh, a spring practice. They came and handcuffed me and asked me a few questions away from all the media boys and then let me go. So, <laughs> yeah, that was that story. So I told him there was a robbery down the road, and somebody said it looked like a head ball coach, so they, they wanted to come check me out. Well, you so, anyway, that was fun, yeah. Teaching moment for everybody right there. Uh, speaking of Clowney, this this sort of non-story story has has surfaced. I guess a columnist in, a columnist in, South, in uh, Charlotte wrote something about Jadavian should sit out his last year. Uh, and so he can be the number one draft pick. And you had a response to that. And I, heard, I saw you on TV during the basketball game halftime over the weekend or last week, and you were saying you made a point about, you know, you really you, you need to enjoy the experience. Can you fill us in on what how that happened and, and where it's going now and if there's anything to it at all? Apparently not, but what do you think? Well, I think most of the guys that, that write, he should sit out are guys that maybe have never been on a team, you know, never uh, – never uh, been on a football, basketball, baseball team, even in high school or anywhere, and they don't know the privilege it is to be on a team and try to achieve whatever you can that season. And uh, that, uh, that, that's important. And plus, uh, he came here to play three years. We all knew that. 
and if he quits after two, uh, then he's, he may not be as popular around here as if, if he played all three. And we all need a home to come back to. We can't play football forever. So hopefully the players that play here feel comfortable coming back to Columbia or this area, and uh, certainly they're always appreciated. You made a statement uh, in a story I read, and I never know if it's accurate or not, but uh, let's just say that for the sake of the conversation that it is, about Clowney becoming such a popular, talked about guy now after that big hit. Um, and I think your quote was, since out at, at hit in the Outback Bowl, I think he's become the number one talked about player, maybe more than Johnny Manziel. I don't know if I said more than I said he and Johnny Manziel are probably the mm-hmm. the two they talk about right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe more than Johnny. I may, yeah, I may have said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's good if it's good for Genevion either. He's he's missed a few weight room workouts the last couple of days, so I'm I'm, I'm getting worried about mm-hmm. uh, him uh, 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 covering his responsibility to our team here now. So I, I'm hoping that one hit didn't turn him <laughs> into uh, you know sort of a problem guy because he was no problem at all for two years and uh, he's missed a couple of workouts here the last week or so so we we, we gotta we gotta have a little talk with him well in the music business they always talk about being a one hit wonder you don't want that right <clears throat> that's right that's yeah. right that hit may have hurt him more than it helped him <laughs> uh, yeah, but a lot, a lot of people don't realize uh, it was a big play it was a huge play in the game I, I can't say it was the biggest play uh, right after they sent us, made an unbelievable catch. Connor Shaw got it down there somehow, and we took the lead. Uh, but then they came right back down and drove it, oh, 70, 75 yards, whatever. And uh, they took the lead with about three minutes left. And somehow or another, we hit a few balls here and there and, and then hit Bruce Ellington for the touchdown. So there was a whole bunch of big plays in that game, and uh, certainly Clowney's hit was one of them. Uh, but without those other plays, we, we were a loser in that game. You know, you always come up with quarterbacks coach somehow or the other, and then Dylan Thompson gets introduced on the scene, and you're playing two quarterbacks, and Dylan Thompson looks like he's got some promise, I know. And I was trying to think, who does he remind me of that you coach? I don't know that I can think of anybody. Yeah, Dylan has come come around nicely. He, he really has. He played early in the season, and then uh, Connor got his foot uh, hurt a bit here and there, and we played him the entire Clemson game. But uh, what happened to Dylan? Uh, he uh, he gained confidence this year. He uh, he sort of always was acted a little nervous or something. But he uh, he 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 came into the time to play this year and said, "I'm ready, coach. I'm ready." And so he he'll take his steps and let it go. And that's the only reason he got the pass off to Bruce Ellington in the Outback Bowl because our right tackle didn't even touch the guy <laughs> coming around him. And uh, but it didn't matter. It reminded me of Shane Matthews. Mm. Uh, I remember one time we played Georgia, and the Georgia players were talking about pass rushing and this, that, and the other to get to Matthews. And after the game, one of the media guys said, "Well, you said you were going to rush him. What, what happened?" And he said, "Listen, the tackle didn't even touch me, but the, the guy already threw the ball before I could get there." And that's what uh, Dylan did in the bowl game. He let it go before the guy, what he touched, could get to him. And sometimes you you have to do that. He's a pretty skinny guy. You worry about him getting hurt back there? Who's that? Thompson. Dylan? Yeah. No, no, he's pretty he's pretty good sized kid. Was he a six Matthews four? was skinny now. Yeah, but yeah, he never, that's right. He he didn't get hurt either. Yeah, he he was flexible and loose and yeah. tough and courageous. Yeah, I was I was very fortunate to have a whole bunch of good quarterbacks uh when I coached at Florida. I think right now we got the best quarterback situation, obviously, with Dylan and Connor Shaw. Uh, these guys are just real steady and can run with it and and don't make don't make many mistakes at all. Mm-hmm. All right, Coach, you won 11 yep. games last two seasons. Uh, yep. That's something that South Carolina has never done. You just keep going in uncharted territories. Now you're looking to get uh, your first SEC championship, naturally. Uh, you had your first SEC crown in 2010. So, so now uh, the next step up, and you signed a new contract, two-year extension at least, uh, in, in 2012. Now, you obviously feel like this is the next move. How close are you to getting to that point, Coach? Oh, well, buddy, we've beaten Georgia three years in a row, but then uh, uh, the last two years we've lost a couple of games, and they don't lose any. 
So they've won the division uh, the last two years, and we've actually gone six and two in the SEC both years. So it's been identical. So we got to try to find a way to uh, to beat them, and then maybe only lose one game afterwards. And hopefully Florida doesn't go undefeated, something like that. But uh, again, yeah, Florida was in the driver's seat this year, and of course had all those turnovers against Georgia, just like we had all of our turnovers against them. But uh, it, it's wide open. We we know we're not going to be favored, but we we got a pretty good team, and uh, we just got to play play very well just about every game, and you know it's a possibility. Final question for Coach Steve Spurrier, South Carolina Gamecocks head football coach. There's some rule changes they're talking about, Steve. I don't know if you've run through the list of them or not. One of them is the spiking the ball. No spiking the ball after three seconds is one of them. How do you feel about that? No spiking the ball. Yeah, they said the uh, team well, can only. I think we. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we've had that one in. They have the uh, excessive celebration rule and so forth. But yeah, some of these new rules. Uh, yeah, buddy, I don't like. I don't like them at all. They're, they're saying unlimited phone calls and text messages and emails, and uh, you can do it all year. You can send ten coaches out all the time, and uh, I, I like it when we had limits. You know, everything's got to have a limit, and I think it's unfair to the high school coaches and the high school players that these coaches are calling all the time and texting all the time. So it's. Uh, uh, we had a pretty good controlled setup, I thought, and now they're trying to open it up like it was 25, 30 years ago. So I, I don't, I don't particularly like what they're trying to do right now. When I said spiking, coach, I meant clocking. Uh, the the ruler talking about changing. If there are three seconds or more of the clock, you can. It's the only time you can. Oh yeah, I read about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read about that. What, the other about, day. what about that? Does that make a difference or not? Oh, I don't know. It could possibly. Uh, yeah, they did say you have to have three seconds left if yeah. you want to, want to. Yeah, I guess you call it spike it, pluck the ball. Yeah. Pluck it, I guess. Is I right thought you term called my score. No, you know, no, 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 yeah, I figured that's what it was. <laughs> Miscommunication there yeah. on my part. Well, uh, Coach, thanks for spending some time with us, and um, and, and uh, we'll follow you with interest next year once again. All right, buddy, we'll see you. We'll see you at the beach in July. Okay, Sam, we'll be there, Coach. Thank you. Okay, my man. All right, All right see you, Steve Spurrier. Piece of work, isn't he? He's a uh, there's nothing that rattles him. No, no, he's he's. he's well, there there are two things that rattle him. Quarterback, the quarterback is on the sideline, and yeah. the quarterback throwing interceptions <laughs> yeah. in the game. Yeah, yeah. that does rattle him for sure. <laughs> yeah, he was called Easy Rider when he was in the college. The way he played, you yeah. know, you know what that means. Oh yeah, actually. great movie. Uh, yeah. Peter Fonda was. But uh, but uh, like I said, I mean, you know, he's got his ups and his downs. He's got his good side and his bad side. He can aggravate the the fool out of you, especially other coaches. Uh, torment you, but he's a he's got a good sense of humor, and in my opinion, makes the game. He fun. almost drove Philip Fulmer to the nut house. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Greatest line ever in football: "You can't spell citrus without U T." And that one is <laughs> FSU Free Shoes University. Although Bianchi says he takes credit for that. By the way, Tom James just texted me talking about he just made ball coach's day. <laughs> <laughs> Not hardly. All right, so all right, so I thought he had something to say about that uh, clocking the ball, and thanks for pointing that out, Tom. When I said spiking, he thought you meant touchdown. But he calls sp- spiking too, but he just thought I was talking about after the right. celebration play. But it's referred to as clocking right. the ball, and uh, and so uh, I, I still, I, to me, it seems like that's unnecessary. That, that should be a judgment call by the officials. It should. There's no reason to make a rule about it. No, no right, exactly. I agree. Officials get it right. I mean, when was the last time you seen a game? Oh, they extended the game because they didn't have enough time, and they, their clock didn't start right. right. That doesn't happen. There's exactly. an NF, there's an NCAA referee running the clock. Exactly. It's not it's not you know Gator Homer Joe that's up there in the press Correct. box doing it like it used to be back in the day, right, like it was back in the day. It's an actual NCAA licensed official now. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We talk football with Coach Spurs. Talk basketball with Franz Beard next. We'll take a break. Come back here, and we'll talk about tomorrow night's game between Missouri. In Florida, right here on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. And also, when we get back, I got a unique website I need to tell you about, buddy. Hmm. Okay, we'll do that right here on The Source. 
Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and JJ LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. It's time to crown the King of the Wing and the Prince of Pizza at the 7th Annual King of the Wing Competition on Thursday, February 28th at ARC Marion, 2800 Southeast Mary Camp Road in Ocala. This event features all-you-can-eat wings and pizza from all over town. Advanced tickets are $20 for adults or $15 for kids. Proceeds benefit developmentally disabled adults at ARC Marion. Visit www.kingofthewing.com or call 352-351-2479 for more info. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hirschberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Call me crazy. Some people say insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. I think insanity is 1,000 single-sided, full-color business cards for 15 bucks or packing service for 50% off. Call me crazy. <laughs> Green Sea Printing on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street. 789-6683. That's 789-6683. Look for the yellow signs. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veteran. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem, and you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome, and they are so so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320 and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. News Talk 1370. WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732 8000. 732 8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370. WOCA. We're back on Buddy Sports Page. Update on the uh, the Northern Trust Open. Yeah, where's Mr. Golf been? Played in, played in the Riviera. I, I kept up with the updated last week and on Saturday. Start calling you Mrs. Golf or something. I don't. John know. Merrick wins in a Same. playoff. Second year in a row that this tournament's went to a playoff. John Merrick wins on the second hole of a playoff, defeating Belgian. Uh, if you remember, uh, Belgian was the golfer who had Charlie, an, Belgian. Charlie Belgian had an anxiety attack. And was taken to the hospital last year in Orlando, and then came back and won the Disney tournament. He loses in a playoff to John Merrick, who went, played golf at USC, played a lot at Riviera, and thought what, I thought he what played at UCLA, UCLA, not USC. 
UCLA and thought what a better place to win than Riviera where he played his college yeah. golf at. Yeah. Our guy Ted Potter Jr. tied for 10th, top 10 finish. How much cash did he win? Um I have not looked at the money uh uh but he's had a profitable swing. Well, he, he finished tied for he t- finished tied for 47th 2 weeks ago. Tied for 16th last week and yeah. tied for 10th this week. Maybe you could look that up and tomorrow you could tell us about how much I will. I'm going to guess 200k or so right in there. Somewhere right in that area. I'd be able to go out there. I'd go to the coast for 200k. Got to have about 700,000 though to keep your card. Not in one swing. <laughs> no, no, but got to have about 700,000 on the, the season. The golf season is not even right. five, six weeks old. Uh, the golf season is n- uh, nine weeks old. Yeah, but they didn't play every week. He didn't play every week. Right. Anyway, the point is that uh, Ted Potter did pretty well, and uh, he's making some cash shola. And Just, this week, the big guys are at the World Accenture Match Play Tournament. Tiger Woods already drawn a pretty tough opponent. Charles Howell the third. Yeah, Tiger needed to make a move here and show us he's still around. Speaking of making a move, Gator basketball team has made a move up to number five. Who would have thought the Miami Hurricanes would be number two? Uh, and tomorrow night, they've got a game that, I don't know, seems fairly significant. They've got two meaningful games left probably on the schedule, although they, I would have to count Arkansas since they lost to them. But this is to say this, is, this could be a little bit of a test. Some people say yes, some people say no. But uh, the team that they, uh, they, they sort of manhandled last time, they got to play them again this time. And I think the result might be a little different. Uh, tomorrow night, France Beard joins us now to talk about it. France, what's going on, bro? Well, the Gators are number four in the coaches poll, and they got two yeah. first place votes in the coaches poll too. Yeah. So th- th- this is a team that everybody knows that the Gators, the, how good the Gators are, uh, and, and that's what makes this game at Missouri very, very intriguing mm-hmm. for them is because uh, Missouri's got one of the better student sections in the country. I mean, they're a, gr- a group called the Antlers, and I guarantee you the Antlers will be will be out there, re- you know, rocking and rolling early and trying to get into the Florida's head. The Gators can win this game easily if they just stay focused and if they remember that to do the same thing they did the last time, which is to put the pressure on the Missouri guards make them make passes they don't want to make, take shots they don't want to take. If they do that, Florida will win this ball game. If they let the guards if they let the guards loose, then Missouri can do some damage. Well I heard him referred to um Wilbekin and, and Boynton as lockdown guards uh on T V over the weekend. That's a pretty good phrase. They are kind of lockdown guards, aren't they? Well, Kenny, for the last three years, has, has drawn the toughest defensive assignment every single ball game. And the difference is, his last three years, he also had to cover for Irving Walker. And he doesn't have to do that anymore. Kenny's locking his guy down. He's always done that. And now you've got Scotty in there, who also locks his guy down there. And then you got Rosario in there, who's playing, I, I, I wouldn't call it lockdown defense, mm-hmm. but it's it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad at all. It keeps getting better defensively and making surprises. So they've got people that can really play. And, and the thing I like is I like the way Billy plays his defense. They're, they're going to do some things. You'll see them do this against Missouri, I guarantee you, where they'll play Missouri man-to-man for the first, say, 20 seconds of the shot clock. And they'll shift into a matchup zone. And they'll make they'll do this or or vice versa and make the other team reset the offense and then all of a sudden have to take a shot they don't want to take with four seconds to go in the shot clock. That's a good uh, observation. But, I agree with you on that. And I'll say this <clears throat> before we run short of time: I was not a Rosario fan. I am now a big Mike Rosario fan because he's not only played much better on defense, not up to the level of those other guys. He is scoring the basketball. He's got a multitude of shots. He's playing team basketball. He can light it up. He can actually carry the team offensively, which I never thought I'd say. Well, not only that, you watch him when uh, the, uh, one of the plays that I really appreciated was was Mike Frazier goes in there and gives up a wide open three on Saturday, and it comes right before a timeout. And there's Rosario coming over there, putting his arm around and saying, and, and you can tell he's talking about the defense, saying, "Hey, we can't have that. You got to talk to you, got to you got to communicate with us so that people rotate, so we don't leave a wide open shooter." This is why Florida's so good defensively, buddy. Moving your feet's all about moving your mouth. Yep. If your mouth is moving, your feet are moving, and this team talks. This yep. team talks. 
through the screen. It talks through the rotation. Speaking of, mouth, you... speaking of the mouth movement, we have moved our mouths right up to the last five seconds. Franz, thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Talk to you Thursday. Franz Beard on uh, Gator Talk Monday, presented by Country Club of Ocala. I want to thank our guest today. Interesting discussion with Mari Dean on the Fort King situation. The old ball coach, the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, joins us for a nice interview. We'll replay parts of that tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, of course, you heard Franz Beard. On behalf of my broadcast partners, 